hard work will never betray me. Chapter 41 A few days after I learned recovery magic. After that, I had successfully mastered several new magic spells such as telescopic vision and eavesdropping, and I was working on developing a new magic spell using shock. At this point, my combat power should be quite high. The only attribute I can use is the non-attribute, for some reason, I had no aptitude for other attributes magic, which I should have been able to use. I can't extend what I didn't have, no matter how much I will say continuity is power. I can use a number of non-attribute magic, North Shogun Bushinryu, Shock, and Recovery Magic, and my overall fighting ability is already close to a plus rank. I'm sure I can say that at least A is definitely there. There are not that many A-ranked mages or adventurers in the Empire, and an A-ranked mage can be a mainstay in a local adventurer's guild, or even a frontline mages in one of the three elite divisions of the Imperial Army. In the case if you are a commoner, you will not have to worry about your livelihood for the rest of your life. But you never know what's going to happen in the world. For example, I still don't think I can beat my father. My father, General Karl Heinz of the North, used to be an S-ranked warrior, a war demon. Even now that he's married and I'm born, his fame is known throughout the empire. It seems that even though he is such men, he is not actually the strongest in the empire. I've only heard rumors about it, but I heard that there is a hermit in the imperial kingdom who lives for hundreds of years. He seems to be living in seclusion somewhere deep in the mountains or in the forest, but if there is a crisis in the empire, he is promised to go into battle at the request of the emperor. He seems to be like a guardian god, but since he is a hermit, it is safe to assume that he is half god. It's impossible for a human to live for hundreds of years, and since he's got a leg up on the rest of us, I guess he's not too far off the mark. As of now, the only people who are known to be stronger than me are in the Imperial Army or my parents, and they are all basically of good nature, so the chances of me being harmed by them are low. But of course there are bad people more powerful than me that I don't know about, and there's no guarantee that I won't run into them. Then I must become stronger as soon as possible to be able to fight against enemies I have yet to see. I am the future heir to the Northern General. I can't just sit around playing around. Eight spoke asterisk. The kidnapper from last time, it seems that the culprit has been caught. Oh. It's relief. Said father, who already finished his lunch and was drinking his after dinner tea as he savored his exotic sauteed beef. The patrolmen were able to respond quickly to Eberhard's request. It's not always easy for an organization to move without a decision from the their boss. It seems that my taking the feared girl to the police lead to the revealing his identity at the time, and instructing them to take immediate action had been successful. Strengthening patrols and stricter screening of city entrances and exits may seem like mundane measures, but they are costly and cannot be easily implemented by a decision made by patrol headquarters alone. We have to get the approval of the council and the lord to increase the budget for the measures. In this way, you may be a child, but you are the next lord, even if you are a child, and you will be held responsible for what you do according to your orders. That's why I was able to work on the measures quickly without waiting for approval. In ordinarily case, a rigid system of rules and regulations is effective in preventing rampant injustice and outbursts of power, but once an incident occurs, a top-down approach may be faster and more accurate. However, if the top management makes a wrong decision, the whole thing will go down the drain, so it cannot be said that top-down is better. It just so happened that my decision was the right one this time. The criminal who was caught was a lowly adventurer who worked in a criminal organization. The man himself was nothing more than a disposable pawn, but the person he was working on was one of the organization's heads. This is the reason why the Heidberg branch of the organization was destroyed in the end. That's right. Then I did a good thing. But the head of the organization seems to have escaped. I'm sending urgent letters to the surrounding lords, but I don't know if they get them in time. Criminal organizations are a pain in the ass. As long as the top executives are still alive, the low-level goons can be supplemented by the poor and the desperate, and instead of obeying the law and customs, they ignore them do more chromes so no matter how many times they beaten, they always will come back from nowhere. Since it is much easier to steal money than earning them, people without any sense of ethics will commit crimes without any hesitation. So, from the perspective of the lords who are cracking down on them, 
they have no choice but to put pressure on the criminal organizations to shut them down and make it relatively easier for the people who are earning in a right way. Some people have no choice but to become criminals, and it's a hard world to live in, but that's the way politics is. Sometimes it is necessary to make a ruthless choice to cut off the evil of the few. This world is still in the process of development. It is not as rich as the developed countries of the world. It need to modify the structure of society as a whole without wasting limited resources. I hope Lily made it back home safely. She left Heidberg a few days ago and should be arriving at her parents' house in Bernstadt by now. The distance to Bernstadt will still take a couple of days, she said. But with the Duke's excellent bodyguards, she won't be delayed as much as the crime syndicate. I'm sure the criminal organizations don't want to make enemies of the Duke's. The Duke's family, which is powerful, will probably destroy them sooner or later, but as long as they don't touch the Duke's family, they won't be actively destroyed. It may seem like a futile attempt to prolong life, but if person can get out of the criminal business and get a legitimate job while prolonging his life, he is in good position. Don't worry. I've also given her the pendant for the communication device, and I'm sure she will contact me when she gets to Bernstadt safely. I thought there was nothing to worry about, and returned to my room. Chapter 42 Al! Help me! Exclamation point. I heard Lily's voice in the middle of the night, and I jumped up. I in my room. I was asleep in my bed and Lily was not next to me. Al! Lily? I'm sure T's not a dream. Lily is calling me. I hurriedly channeled my magic into a sapphire bracelet and connected it to Lily's communication device. Hello, Lily. Can you hear me? She might be in some kind of danger. I whispered to Lily so that no one else could hear me. Oh, Hal. Thank God, we're connected. What's the matter, Lily? Yo are in danger? Since Lily was speaking in a normal voice, I replied in a normal voice without lowering my voice. I'm being held as hostage by bandits. But it's okay because there is no Mihari right now. A bandist? Are you okay? The Knights is alive and well. Their goal seems to be to get money from me. All right. I'll go help you right away. Do you know where you are located? I don't think we in the dukedom yet. We're in a big town. How long have you been held by them? The day before yesterday. But they didn't hurt me. The day before yesterday, which means they were attacked two days after they left Heidberg, although they apparently received minimal treatment considering that they were safe for two days. Do you know how they look like? Hmm, there are quite a few of them, so I can't say. They don't look too shabby for bandits. They look like mafia. Mafia. I understand. If anything happens, call me right away. If you whisper, they probably won't notice. Yeah. Hal. What is it? I'm scared. Don't worry, I'll save you. Once I shut down the communication, I hurriedly ran out of the room and searched around the study, illuminating the surroundings with the non-attribute magic lighting. I picked up a map of the surrounding area, with the Fahrenheit Frontier County at the center. With the level of technology in this world, maps are surcered information, so they are kept in the back of the study like this. That what I need. I picked up a map of the surrounding area, with the Fahrenheit Frontier County at the center. With the level of technology in this world, maps are surcered information, so they are kept in the back of the study like this. I searched for a town that fit the criteria Lily had mentioned. A relatively large town in front of the dukedom, a town that takes about two days to travel from here. It's the town Canard. The town Canard is a medium-sized town with a population of about 10,000, located about 150 kilometers southwest from the Heidberg. There are a few other small settlements, but no large towns. Jet you wait, Lily. I'll save you. I picked up the map and ran out of the study. I went straight to my parents' room and woke them up. Eberhard? What are you doing here at this hour? Lily's in trouble. I need to go to the town canard. Town canard? And what do you mean by, Lily's in trouble? I'll tell you all about it later. If you can, I want you to send a squad of territorials or patrolmen to canard town right now. See you later. 
Hey, Eberhard, what's going on? Lily's been kidnapped by the bandits. What? That's all I said, and I ran out of my parents' bedroom. I wrapped a leather pouch around my waist and grabbed a map. I left the mansion and ran out into the night streets of Heidberg. Eight spoke asterisk. May, you are awake. I don't think a six-year-old girl should be awake at three o'clock at night, when everyone should sleep but I bet on the possibility that she might be awake, so I sent a message to May. After a while, I received a reply from her. Inan, what's wrong, at this hour? It seems that I woke her up when she was sleeping. It's an emergency. I need your help. Emergency? Yes. I'm on my way already. Is understood. I'll make the necessary preparings. Thank you. Not only she was not angry when I call her in the middle of the night, but she agreed to help me without asking what's going on. What a good friend she is. So, what's going on? When I arrived at the Arendelle workshop, May was standing in front of the workshop, waiting for me. She seemed to have made herself presentable in a short time. I want to go to the town canard now. Do you have any magic tools that would be useful for traveling on long distances? The town canard is about 150 kilometers away. It's a lot faster to arriving by using magic than going on foot, but no matter how fast I go, it's going to take me about three hours of running at full speed. And after three hours of running, I will be exhausted. And I won't be able to rescue Lily. That's where May comes in. I thought that she might have developed some kind of magical tool suitable for transportation as part of her hobby. What? I'm sure I have something like this. Oh. Well then. It's just that the magic energy consumption is horribly low. Let me have a look. This way. What May showed me was a huge object that looked like a winged cruise missile with a seat and motorcycle handlebars added to it. It's the M1. What is this? I had a pretty good idea of what it was, but I didn't think it was possible, so I asked her for more information. I made it based on the airplane that Hal showed me on paper a while ago. It is the next new flying tool that use Hal's shook magic as water power to fly through the air. Science and Technology Paradigm Shift I wonder if May is the reincarnation of a modern Earth scientist? The gods of forging must have possessed her, because she made a rocket plane after seeing the paper airplane I made before. The M1 requires three Syrinx magic stones to fly in the sky, even at its lowest. Even then, it only can fly for a few minutes. That's horribly low on fuel consumption. It only takes a few minutes of May's magical power for three people to fly. That's why I think it'll be hard to make it useful. Don't worry, now I'm here. With the amount of magic power I have, I should be able to travel to a distance of 150 kilometers without losing half of it. That would be much faster than running, and it was still the right decision to ask for May's help. Thank you. The truth is that Lily has been kidnapped by the bandits and SJE is in trouble. So I wanted to save her. What that drug dealer? When May heard this, she looked complicated. But when she thought of something, she looked up and told me. Please wait a moment. May returned to the workshop and brought something. She was carrying a backpack on her back. Please take me with you. May? If something happens to Hal's fiancé, Hal will be sad. That's not good. May? I will help you. It's a great to have to rent transportation at the moment. All right. Thank you, May. You're my friend, so, it's a natural thing. I couldn't help but burst into tears, but I was too embarrassed to look at her. Well, we can't fly with this thing in the town, so we'll have to go outside the city first. Right. I'll take it. Hmm. I raised my muscle strength with body strengthening and lifted the M1. It's quite heavy, but not so heavy to the point where I can't carry it. May and I continued our way through the city at night. The gates of the castle were closed, but the guards were standing there, so I showed them the crest of the Fahrenheit family to get them lets us pass though. Be careful, sir. Tell my father I'm leaving. Very well, sir. I explained the situation to him and he agreed, so I guessed that this guard was a very resourceful person. Now, let's use the shock engine. With that, May turned on the starter and started the engine. After the sound of ooh, there was a loud bang and the engine started work. 
Jeez. That's pretty powerful. The speed is about 300 km per hour. 300 km per hour is about the same speed as the bullet train, isn't it? It is a thing that is an extremely rare for the technological level of this world. I can't keep magic power. That thing needs a lot of magic power. I am sure you can handle it, Hal. There's magic in this world. It's good that with magic is possible to make things work. Now, let's get in. You want me to drive? It's a system that required people to provide the magic power. Apparently, I have to fly on jet plane without a license. I'm going to have to do it on the spot. Well, probably Hal will be fine. Probably? But if I won't do that, Lily would be in danger. There is no option not to do it. Let's go. Okay. I climbed in the M1, put May in the back, and revved the engine. I put May on the back please and started driving. The M1 accelerates with a sound of G-O-O-O. The wind blows against it as it accelerates, but the windshield does a good job of keeping it from affecting us. It's a good design. Thanks. May might even develop a passenger plane one day. I don't think my magical power will be able to power a passenger plane, so I'll probably leave the technical issues to her. The plane finally took off with speed of over 150 km per hour. It was the first flight of my life since I was reborn in this world. We are flying. It was a successful. What? This is the first I man flight. What the hell is wrong with you? I knew you were a mad scientist. It seems that it was the first time for May as well as me to fly. I don't know if there's flying magic in this world, but this is probably the first time in history that a magic tool has been used to fly. They say that people will do anything to achieve it, but no one in this world could have imagined that a six year old would be able to create it. Wait for me, Lily. The altitude was already about 100 meters. The M1 is sucking my magic power and accelerating rapidly. The speed is probably 200 km per hour. The city of Heidberg is becoming closer and closer. I'll leave the road planning to you. Behind me, May, holding a map in her hand, corrects direction by referring to the terrain. If all goes well, we should be able to reach the town Canard in less than an hour. Wait for me, Lily. I'm going to save you. Wait for me, crime organization. I'm going to kill you all, every last of you. Chapter 43 With a roaring sound, the M1 carrying May and me through the summer night sky. It's quite exhilarating to see the forests, plains, and scattered villages from the such high. It's a good thing that today is full moon. If it was cloudy, we would have lost altitude and hit the ground before we knew it. It was fortunate that even though it was nighttime, the moonlight made it possible to see clearly like it was a daytime. We're almost to the town Canard. May, who was sitting behind me, told me in a loud voice over my back. The problem was with the M1 is that it is difficult to hear even if to shout loudly due to the noise of the engine and wind. After flying for a while, I saw a few artificial lights in the distance. We arrived. If to look closely, it can be seen many buildings crowded together and surrounded by walls. It was still hard to tell for sure, but every few houses had some kind of lamp or light leaking out of window. That's the town Canard, and in Basin of Direction, we arrived. Apparently, that was the town Canard. We're ready to land. Hold on tight. Yes, sir. I slowed down the M1 and gradually lowered its altitude. I pulled the wooden wheels out of the fuselage and prepared for landing. I'm not worried about it because it's a magical tool that May made, but even if the plane can't handle the impact of landing, I'll put up a barrier and release a reverse face shockwave to mitigate the impact, so it won't get hurt. 3, 2, 1, landing. Z, 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 z. Landing successful. It's worked out. This is May. As expected, it was a magic tool made by May. The steering wheel was a little shaky, but we succeeded in landing without any problems. I'm not too worried about it because I had a successful unmanned flight test with a small plane. But it's not like we're going to be doing the real thing right away. I knew how I would be able to handle it even if it failed. Well, I'm the one who asked her to do it. I can't blame May for that, and it's working. I'll leave the plane here. 
it's hard to find it here because of the grass, so we'll use that again it when we're done. Well, it can't be helped. And how, how much magic power do you need to be able to fly well? This is a grassland a few hundred meters away from the town canard. There are no buildings nearby, only small forests and wheat fields. Naturally, there was no one around. Shall we go then? Yes. We stealthily approached the town, blending in with the tall grass. If the guards or patrolmen were involved in Lily's kidnapping, they would know that we had come to rescue her. As I carefully approached the town, trying not to make a sound, I tried to contact Lily via communication. Lily, can you hear me? If you can hear me, please respond. Al? I can hear you. What's wrong? Her voice was sleepy, as if she had been asleep until now. I came to the town where you being held can you see what's going on outside from there? I tried to check with my sonar, but I couldn't cover the whole town. First of all, it's still impossible for me to extract specific responses from the 10,000 or so people. It might be possible if it were my mother or some hermit whose location 7 was unknown but it would be difficult with my current abilities. So, I asked Lily if she could see any remarkable things. This is a kind of cheating that can only be done by using the magic of communication. In the past, communication was a type of magic that could only be used one way if both parties were unable to use it. The reason why I can have a two-way conversation like this is because I have a magic tool. It's not the best way to go, but it's a good thing that I had prepared a handy tool like a cell phone to use. I can see a white wall and a tower in the distance. A tower? It was not a great wall like the one in Heidberg, about three meters high, so I could easily climb it by shooting shock waves from my feet. Tower. That's it. In the center of the town, there was a building that looked like a shrine but a rather magnificent bell tower. As far as I could see, there was no building taller than a five-story tall bell tower in Canard, so I was pretty sure that was the tower. However, I could see the tower for most of the town, so I wasn't quite able to narrow down the area. The tower is visible for most of the town, but that wasn't enough information to find you. How close is the white wall? It's pretty close. Also, it's pretty big. A large white wall. In modern Japan, this would be a very important piece of information, but most of the walls of the buildings in this town were white. To be honest, it was not a condition to narrow down the search. Hmm. I don't know what to do. Then why don't you have Hal climb up the tower and report to Lily so she can see you? I see, that's a good idea. When I was troubled, May suggested a good idea and I immediately started to follow her advice. Lily, I'm going to climb the tower now, and when you will be able to see me, let me know. Okay. With this idea, I can narrow down the search area considerably. May might be a genius after all. As we entered the town, we took care not to be spotted by the residents or patrolmen using the sonar, and headed towards the building where the bell tower is located at a short run. Occasionally, drunks, Government officials on our way were, and patrolmen would be caught in the sonar's search range, but we hid in the shadows each time we got a response, and somehow we managed to reach the bell tower without being spotted. There are no soldiers in sight, right? Well, it's the middle of the night. Let's go. Yes. We snuck into the grounds of the temple and ran to the foot of the bell tower. May, you stay downstairs and keep in security. Okay. I put on my strength and magic and take out a throwing knife from my pouch. Hmm. Just as my throwing knife was about to reach the top of the 15-meter bell tower, I activated the magic I had cast on the knife. Binding rope. Several magic wires about 5 millimeters thin flew out from the knife and entangled in the bell tower. One of them wrapped around my arm. It took me about 30 seconds to reach the top of the bell tower, where the bell was. Lily, can you see me? I activated my newly learned telescopic vision to look around the town, while I connected my communication to Lily. After a few seconds, Lily replied. I can see you. Hell, you came. Of course, I'd go anywhere to save Lily. It was a cringeworthy line, but it was also meant to reassure Lily. Embarrassed, I moved around the bell. How about this? There's still some distance. How about this? Almost there. Are you in the front? There it is. 
That's the front. You pretty far away from there. Can you see me? I activated my telescopic vision as fast as I could and checked each building that was some distance away. This way, I should be able to see Lily at some point. I will save you. Lily. Al. I found Lily. I could see her looking at me from a window with iron bars in a small warehouse-like building on the grounds of a larger house about 300 meters away from here. Iron bars, won't stop me. There are no guards on the premises at a glance, but there is a glimmer of light leaking from inside what appears to be the main building. I'm not sure if they're having a party to calculate the ransom they'll get from kidnapping the Duke's daughter. Either way, it would be their last party. I jumped down from the top of the bell tower and landed softly with a shockwave on my feet, then ran over to May who was standing on guard to tell her that I had found Lily. May, I found Lily. Let's hurry up and save her. Okay. I'll help you. Saying this, May took out from her bag a magic gun that she had just developed. It is a revolver-type shotgun. It's a weapon with 36 bullets. Now we can take out those bastards. Is very reliable. To be honest, I wasn't planning on letting May participate in the mission to save Lily. If I can handle this kind of armament, I should have no problem taking on a big man. It's better to keep May away from the fight and let her shoot from a distance. Let's go. Yes. Now that I knew the location, there was no need to hide. I ran at full speed through the city at night with May. Chapter 44 Listen, May. Our first priority is to rescue Lily. We'll deal with the criminals later. Okay. We came to the hideout of the crime organization where Lily was being held, and we hide it in the shadows to plan our strategy. Here's the plan. I'll get Lily take out of here, and you take her and run to safe place. If you see anyone suspicious, fire back with a gun. It's better if you don't kill them, because it will be possible to get more information from them, but you can kill them if you want. They are the people who kidnapped the Duchess. They'll get the death penalty for impunity anyway. With magic gun I will fire. It will be good not to cause any damage to people or houses. It's the middle of the night, so it's relatively safe. I'll leave that to you. The accuracy is perfect. Excellent. If I rescue Lily, they will certainly notice me. So, before they can fight back, I have to take them all out at once. Then let's start the mission. May and I jumped out of the shadows and ran to the hideout's gate. The bored-looking gatekeeper notices us and asks us who we are. Who the hell are you? I hate it when people make noise. If it was just me, May would still be here. Until we get Lily out of here, we have to be covert. Just in case they're waiting for us in trouble. Sonar, wiretap dot. I am going to use the two magics to find out if there are any hidden enemies. This is because in this world, there are people who can use sonar breaking stealth and silence magic. Sonar breaking is a magic that prevents the other party from detecting your presence, like a stealth device. It hides your presence by absorbing the magic waves of detection emitted by your opponent, or by bouncing them back in a completely different direction. Silence also blocks the flow of air around you so that no sound is transmitted. These two magics were said to be very important for assassins. But there aren't many people who can use that kind of advanced magic. Unlike sonar, which is a C-rank non-attribute magic, stealth is an A-rank non-attribute magic. It's also a B-rank non-attribute magic. In the case of person an assassin who is highly skilled in both, he don't have to go against the laws to get hired by a legitimate organization like the military at an exceptional rate. There was no need for this kind of banditry. Okay, there's no reactions. After confirming that there were no ambusher, I opened the gate and ran to the warehouse-type building where Lily was being held. Lily, I'm here to save you. Al. Lily looks at me with tears in her eyes from other side of the bars. It's okay. Just stay away from the door. All right. After confirming that Lily is away from the door, I unleash a shockwave that break through the door. The door blew inward with a loud sound. Lily. Hal Quinn. Lily jumps out from the place and hugs me. It seems that she is not chained up or anything. Let's hurry and get to safe place. Ah. Uh -huh. 
perhaps sensing something unusual, from the inside of the building that was nearby suddenly became noisy. It's a good chance to escape while no one has come out yet. This way. May was waving at us from a distant corner. I'm sure you have a lot of thing to say, but for now I'd appreciate it if you'd just shut up and follow me. By the way, Lily and May have always seen each other as enemies. But not in that case. We're going to the tower where we can see the whole town, so it's the best place for us to go. I see, you've thought of that. From the high bell tower, we can shoot the enemy from a distance. If they try to climb up from the bottom, the enemy will not be able to get close to us once the stairs are blocked. It won't be suitable for a long-term battle, but we don't have to worry about that, because I'll come running as soon as I've destroyed the enemy. How do we get up there? I thought the stairs were locked. Here we go. May took out a key. It's the key. Why didn't you take it out earlier? If you'd told me, I wouldn't have had to climb up the wall. Hal climbed up before I could say anything. When she said that, I couldn't argue with her. I mean, six-year-olds don't usually have a key. There was no way I could have predicted that. Oh, May it's not normal. In the meantime, I heard a loud voice coming from the hiding place. It seems that we have been noticed. I'm coming. Ah. Uh -huh. May pulled Lily along with her, whether she liked it or not. I'm sorry. Sorry for what? For calling you a dumb cat. Don't worry about it. Hurry up, or you'll get caught again. Thank you. It seems that the conflict has been resolved. Lily, where are your guards and servants? Hal, I was wondering if you could help them out too. All right. I'll help them, too. The more you help them, the more layers of protection you'll have over Lily. Well, then I'm going to punish them for their hubris. I'm going to make them pay for everything they had done L. Hal. What? Please. I got it. I watched as the two of them made their way to safe place towards the shrine, and then headed to the hideout of the crime organization. It's will be bloodbath tonight. No one will escape alive. Chapter 45 Ow. Ugh. Who the hell are you? A big group of men screamed and rolled around. Some were blown away and fainted, some were cowering with broken bones, and some were retreating in fear. Not a single one of them tries to stand up against me. It's not easy for you, Your Excellency. To have your beloved daughter kidnapped by a bunch of people. But something didn't make sense. The Duke's bodyguards are excellent warriors with a rank of C and B ranked and 1A ranked. I'm not sure how much of a difference there is in the numbers, but I can't see how they could be defeated by small fish like this. So this is the prison where the guards are being held. I looked and saw that there was a door with a padlock on it, so I released a tiny shockwave to destroy the lock. Is the Duke's bodyguard here? Who are you? This time, one of the good-dressed men who had been chained up asked me. I am Eberhard Karlheinz von Flensburg Fahrenheit, Lily's fiancé. Lily contacted me and I rushed to her aid. It seems that they couldn't see my face in the dark, so I used the magic lighting to illuminate the prison, and when they saw my face, they said in surprise. Master Eberhard. You can be amazed later. Can you move? I break their chains and turn. You're our savior all. You very much. Where is Lily? I've already taken her to the safe place. I will defeat the enemy. I want some of you to go and escort her. Yes. Hey, Jade, Tony, Alan. You guys head to the young lady's side. Maids, too. Terry, Roger, Alfred. You're coming with me to destroy and capture the bandits. Sasha, you talk to the town patrol to told them to send out unit. Show them the Duke's family crest. Yes. He is an excellent Duke's escort knight. He made a mistake once, but once he was freed, he quickly regained his composure and acted quickly. What about you, Sir Eberhard? Of course, I will destroy them. When I responded, the escort captain turned over and told me. There is one enemy who is too much for us to handle. He is the one we. Please be very careful with that enemy, I think he probably an A-plus rank. A plus rank. In terms of strength, he's one rank below my dad, and probably about the same level as me right now. 
at the very least, he's strong enough to have defeated multiple escort knights in addition to this A-ranked escort captain. Hey, what happens while I was not here? Felix. You're resting, keep it. Fuck up. So why are you guys running? The man who came out from the back of the hideout was a man in his thirties, carrying a long long great sword on his shoulder, who looked like the kind of adventurer the captain of the guard had just told us about. He was about six feet tall, with a medium build, and his hair was neither too long nor too short. Above all, he has a savage look in his eyes. Even now, even though he had killed the man who had complained to him in an instant, he acted as if nothing had happened, which could only be described as creepy. It's that guy. Eberhard. He's the one that messed up with us. Oh, what, you want to run away after I beat you? I don't like that. My employer would be very angry. Employer? Me, my little gentleman. You. Another man came out of the room. It was that stinky merchant-looking man who had come to the Fahrenheit house a few days ago to meet with father. Business is booming. Slaves can be sold at a high price. Just when I had stared T.A. kidnapping business and the Duchess came to visit. It's no exaggeration to say that the luck was already on my side, isn't it? The stinky merchant-looking man tapped the shoulder of the man standing beside him called Felix. Fortunately, I've made a new connection with Felix the Windslayer, a renowned bouncer, and this I will have written out Duke Daughter and a legitimate son of a frontier count in one go. If the enemy had kidnapped Lily for some other reason, I would have found it difficult to do the same. But when I saw them lie my eyes, I understand that they were human trash. This way, I wouldn't have to worry about overdoing things. Eberhard. You guys need to stay back. You don't want to get caught in the middle of this. Thank you. Good luck. Hey, we're take care of other the hurry up and get to move. Yes. Due to my hasty flight, I only have about half of my magic power left, but strangely enough, I don't feel as if I'm going to lose. Felix the Windslayer. I've never heard of him. Oh? You don't know me, an A-plus ranked adventurer? I'm afraid no. I've got a much better people around me. The kid is. That's the kind of thinking you get from being spoiled, isn't it? I'll play with you for a while. T, though the cost of such behavior is high. You're a ragtag bunch of losers. Fuck you. Ha, ah, you're taking kid too serious, D. The air between the two was tense. In the midst of this tense air, the two of them gradually closed the gap. One of the escorts retreated and made a jarring sound. That sound was a signal, and the rest of the escort jumped out of the way. Chapter 46 The Sound The sound of one of the guards retreating is signal, and they jump out of the way as if they'd been shot. There was a high-pitched clang, and Felix's great sword slashed fiercely against my magic cover knife. You're pretty good for a kid. Are you really just kid? I am just kid. From his pint of view, I release a shockwave at his feet, causing him to step away and get distance. It's been a while since I've been hit by someone this strong. Hey, fake merchant. Can I kill him? Who is this fake merchant? You can't kill him. He will a valuable hostage of mine. Ah. This is such a nice fight, but I can't hold back. Die. This is why adventurer battle junkies. What are you talking about? I was a little pissed off that he was ignoring me, so I fired a few shock bullets at the fake merchant and Felix. What the hell is that? What's that? I've never seen such thing before. But Felix, of course, was able to block them. This guy saw through my impact bullet at first sight and cut it down, and the one I fired at the fake merchant, as measure. You can't prevent it in one go. It seems that he is not just an A-plus rank. His magic power itself is not that great, but his swordsmanship is outstanding. If it's just swordsmanship, he might be stronger than my dad. I have two names first one is Windslayer. My second name is Kazakiri, because I can cut even the wind. Remember that. You are going to die soon, though. Then I'll tell you something too. I don't have a second name yet, but I'm the one who will eventually succeed the North General. The next North General. There is no shortage of opponents. It's just a shame you are too young. What are you talking about? 
Hurry up and take him down. I don't care if you have a limb or two. Your true colors are showing, fake merchant. The shocking bullet that just hit him must have scared him. The fake merchant forgot his condescending tone and gave Felix a foul-mouthed order. In fact, if Felix hadn't helped him, the fake merchant would have been dead. It was a desperate move. My employer is angry, he said. Next time, I'll be serious. I'm not afraid of you. It's my 18th, shock, after all. The Hokushobu Shinryu is also good, but my skill level still lacks then, the only thing I can rely on is the saturation attack of, shock, that you a huge amount of magical power. Beyond the limit of Felix's ability so I can handle him with a huge firepower. Die, kid. You're going to end up in a piggy bank. Felix closed the distance with terrifying acceleration. Fei I can't seem to break his stance. It's too dangerous if things stay like this. Then. Shock barrage. With both of my hands outstretched, I fire a series of shock bullets with such fury that it looked like a machine gun's. It's so fucking annoying. I'll be back. I can't attack the fake merchant, so I direct all my power on Felix and attack with everything I've got. Each of the shock bullet had the power of a 35mm machine gun, but Felix was nor harmed by dozens of them. Oh, my god. The great sword that he is using is also a very powerful one, and it seems that even after such an impact, the blade does not even damage a little. I thought about destroying the weapon, but at this rate, I'd be cut down before his weapon reached its limit. I'm getting used to it. It was no longer a barrage of bullets and Felix had cut through it all and was approaching me step by step. It's no use. I'll have to use that. I wanted not to use it but, if I think stay like this, O will lose sooner or later. Realizing that the odds were stacked against me, I decided to devote a little of my magic to my feet, gaining some distance between me and Felix and THN I activating a new spell that I recently developed. Minefield. Gah. Minefield. It's spell in which a shockwave released from my feet travels through the ground and explodes in the distance. It's not a spell that directly impacts the enemy, so it's not very powerful, but it's a great spell to break enemy stance. Bursting Impact Bullet. The next my spell is the newly developed Bursting Impact Bullet, which explodes just before hitting the enemy, making it impossible to physically cut them down. This spell is slightly less powerful than a direct hit with a normal impact bullet, but chance of get damage is higher. Ah. It seems that the attack went through. It seems that no matter how much speed have Slayer Felix is, it was difficult for him to literally slice through the blast. It seems that his second name Kazakiri was an exaggeration. But that didn't take him down he stood up with a crazy smile on his face, bleeding from all over his body. What a troublesome enemy. Felix stood up slowly and ran toward me, crawling along the ground, keeping a low profile. Fast. It was an attack that exploited the gaps in his consciousness. I couldn't catch up with him. Die. Felix had been saying nothing but die since a while ago. I don't think he has much of a vocabulary. I am six years old. I can't die. We get into melee combat but his weapon along, two-handed great sword then he is swung with both hands. On the other hand, my weapon is a small knife that covered with magic and an unlimited distance if I will get in his range I won't L win. Storm Dance Rambles Blink the enemy crucifixion The storm dance is a series of attacks like a dancing storm, where the magic power flows through the nerves of the entire body, raising the reflexes and exceeding the reaction speed of user to attack opponent then, after Felix was knocked off his stance by the storm dance, I cast the blink of an eye to get him out of his defensive stance. And finally, I striked Felix's empty hand with a crucifixion. Ah! But even after that, Felix didn't let go of his weapon. I could barely keep the barrier in place, but I was blown away several dozen meters. While being blown over the city I adjusted my stance and landed softly while releasing a few shockwaves. Even for a child, a strike that blows a 20 kilograms body dozens of meters away is terrifying. If this had been a direct hit, I would have been cut in half above and below my torso for sure. Is that the Bushin Ryu? It's hard to beat. Felix, who had chased after me after I was blown away, said with a fierce smile, but it was only hard to deal with. 
he's better than me, that's for sure. A plus rank. Open net it's harder than I thought. I'm not sure if we're evenly matched or if he's better. So far, I've been able to get advance over him, but that's only because I've been able to push him around with a lot of magic power. It's probably the case that out abilities are almost the same. In fact, as an all-rounder with short to long-range attack methods, I have a slight advantage over Felix, who specializes in short-range attacks. However, I haven't been able to beat him. I don't have enough experience in actual combat. You so a talent -y, it's oh shame to kill you. But the good feeling is when I nip such young talent in the bud. You battle junkie. I cursed him, but I couldn't think of a way to shut him up. I'm not sure how long I'll be able to keep it up, though I still have some magic left. I didn't know how much pressure I'll be under in the fight for. My life. I was muttering to myself inwardly, it's not easy being the next northern general when I experience the tension of the fight for live at the age of six. Now, how do I get out of this situation? Chapter 47 How should I get out of this situation? If I rush in, I'm sure to be countered, and my steaming is low I try to take this into an endurance battle. I have plenty of magic power, but if I continue with strategy of stretching things out, I will sure to run out of magic power. The only reason I can maintain a stalemate like this is because I am prolonging the time until death in exchange for a huge amount of magic power. Hey kid. Why are you so strong? Felix was talking to me as if we were long-time friends, as if he didn't like the situation as much as I did. I don't have to answer him, but I do want time to think of a way out of this, so I do. I've been working out my whole life, and I don't want to be mixed in with the other kids around here. Ever since you were born? You can't train yourself while you're a baby. But it's true, otherwise, I wouldn't be so strong. Wow, there are some interesting people in this world. I'm about to turn 30 and I've never met a kid as strong as you. No way. I can't take it lightly. Now, have you come up with a better solution? Tisk. Apparently, he was being shown mercy. For him, this is a game, even if his life is on the line. I don't have time for this, but I won't a crazy bastard take advantage of me. Unfortunately, I didn't come up with a good plan. I'll just have to do my best and rely on my luck. Oh? What a boring guy. I'm going to kill you. You're going to kill him either way, aren't you, why don't you have the option of letting him go? There's no such option. Die. You son of a bitch. Felix comes at me with his great sword held it like a spear, I intercepted it with my binding rope, but the magical power ropes used to capture him were easily cut. Ooh. My head and neck are going to be cut off. You're going to die in this pace. I flew to the side, firing shock bullet as I fled. Felix without problem is slicing it off, but... That's a shame. What? Ah. The first impact bullet I fired was hidden by another bursting impact bullet, which hit him directly. Even though it is less powerful than a normal shock bullet, it will definitely cause a lot of damage if it hits. I am not done yet. I fired one bursting impact bullet after another. It was a little difficult to control at L, but I still managed to hit Felix with five or six shots. Hmm. Felix's voice came out of the cloud of dust. I'm Felix the Windslayer. He shouts, standing up again, this time striking at me from behind. N-N-N-N-N-G-H. N-N-N-N. The knife I held up as quickly as I could the one May had given me caught the heavy blow and shattered it into pieces. The magic blade that I had been holding dissipated, leaving me unarmed. Ugh. I get away and gain a distance of a dozen meters between us, but I didn't feel safe. He'd close the distance to me in an instant. You. Can't win up with that. I'm not going to stop until I've killed my prey. The reason for Felix's strength may be his superior swordsmanship, but it's just as likely that it's his unreasonable ability to take a beating. He was not particularly good at defense nor did he wear armor. And yet, Felix would get up again and again. Not protecting anyone, but just to satisfy his own desires. There is no one more annoying to deal with. He's like a hero in a dark fantasy. His motives are bullshit, but his refusal to go down makes me think he's cool. But I can't forgive you. He kidnapped Lily. So I will never forgive him. I'm not going to lose. 
last time. Here I came. We're almost out of time. Let's have a nice dance. I have no interest in dancing with men. You're a real pain in the ass, you know that? Die. You. I don't have much magic left, but my physical damage is minimal. On the other hand, he has a huge physical advantage over me, but he has very little magic power from the start and he has fully wounded. The odds were in my favor. Ah. Ugh. Felix's wind slash and my impact bullet were at odds. I'm not backing down, and neither he is. I'm not taking any chances. There's not much magic left. Felix was nearing his limit due to that attack. If he don't, we'll end up fighting each other. But I'm not alone. I have the goddess of victory with me. A star twinkled in the night sky. Tada! The sound of a single gunshot echoed across the battlefield. Wah! Felix's head was bleeding and he was dizzy, and I wasn't about to let that chance go. Oh! I poured all of my magic power into my attack and sent a storm of shock bullets at him. Since he hadn't focused his magic, each shot might have been as powerful as a mortar. It was so powerful and loud that Felix couldn't hear his screams. The cloud of dust cleared. Felix, who had been blown tens of meters away, had been knocked unconscious against the side of the road. I won. I turned my head toward the moon, where the moonlit belfry loomed majestically. I gave a thumbs up to the goddess of victory, May, who was probably in the bell tower. Chapter 48 I approached Felix, exhausted and dizzy, as my magic seemed to be nearing its limit. I approached him with caution, just in case he has fainted, but this time he definitely did. I can't believe you fainted after all. Felix was badly injured. Even in his dazed state after being shot in the head, he still had a lot of marks on his right arm where he had tried to slash my shock bullets. However, the sword was broken and the arm from the right shoulder down was shattered and fractured. In the meantime, when I examined him with diagnosis, one of the recovery magic, I found a broken left leg, ribs, and several other injuries such as concussions and serious damage to internal organs. His wind slash was very strong, but with this arm, he would never be able to wield a sword again. Felix himself is still alive, but he is dead as the wind slayer. Normally, I would think that Felix would be dead if he was injured this badly, but the fact that he is still alive after all this is probably because his vitality is so outstanding. Even the direct hit to the brain by May's gun had only caused a slight cut to his temple and a concussion. Honestly, I don't understand. That magic shock gun, although less powerful than my shock bullet, is still powerful enough to penetrate a wooden board. I'm sure it will kill him. I'll tie him up. It's not impossible for Felix, so while he's unconscious, let's take away his tie him with the bondage rope. Rope? Ropes from magical power extended from my hands and twisted intricately to bind the unconscious Felix. Felix jerked, as if he could feel the pain even though he was unconscious but he showed no signs of waking up. The damage seemed too great. Sir Eberhard. Just as I finished restraining Felix, the captain of the Duke's Esker arrived with several of his men and a patrol of Canard Town. Apparently, they were able to restrain the small fish without incident. Are you injured, Sir Eberhard? I'm fine, but I need you to take Lily into safe place. Yes, sir. So, where is the young lady? I silently point to the moonlit bell tower. Make sure the lady is safe. Hurry up. Yes, sir. The movement of the escort unit that was trying to protect Lily was quite agile and solid. Although they were caught off guard by an unexpectedly strong enemy, they were still excellent guards for the Duke's family. Hal Dash. Lily. Lily, who had come down from the bell tower with May, ran up to me at once. I was scared that Hal would lose. There's no way I'm going to lose. But I was scared. Was scared for Lily, too, but she's okay. Thank you. What's the point of being a bride if you can't your fiancé in time of need? Hal. What? I love you. What? Squeal. Ah. This guy dodged a bullet. I'm not going to let you get away with this, even though you're the heroine this time. Oh. We can't do this in public. Oh, so this is the nobleman's night story. 
I'll have one of my minstrels sing it for you. That's a good thing. I'm looking forward to listening to it over a drink. Hey, patrolman, don't get excited about people's love stories. And don't try to spread it. Well, I'm glad Lily's okay anyway. I'm glad you're okay too, Hal. And so the Lily kidnapping case was ended without anyone getting hurt. Eight spoke asterisk. Eberhard. Thank you so much for saving Lily, how can I thank you? Sir, please raise your head. I was only saving Lily's life as her fiancé. I did what I had to do, so don't worry about it. A few days after the incident, Lily's father, the Duke of Bernstein, received the news and came to the Frontier Count's mansion in Heidberg with more guards than usual and a large reward. I'm in the middle of asking me about the reward for saving Lily's life. However, this time it was my fault for limiting the number of guards. As a father, I feel ashamed. What do you mean? This incident took place in my territory. The entire responsibility lies with me. I will take full responsibility. North General. Your son took care of it instead of you didn't he? If you look at the entire Frontier Count family, there is no one at blame. After all, it was my blame. I'm sorry to interrupt you. This incident was caused entirely by the fact that we, the guards, were not strong enough. I apologize with all my heart and soul for this, and I hope you will not be offended by it. How dare you! You literally risked your life to protect her. I, I'm not a martial arts expert, but I've heard the Windslayer nickname. There's nothing for you and your convoy to be ashamed of. But that's no way to show it. The discussion was becoming confused. The only saving grace was that in the end, no real harm was done and everyone felt responsible and wanted to apologize. If this had turned into a blame game, we would have gone to hell in a handbasket. I'm glad everything ended well. Aside from that, we can't go on like this. Then let's do this. I was the only one in the group who wasn't responsible for the situation, but I was the only one who had made a difference, so I had to come up with a solution. We all have to take responsibility. The Count of Fahrenheit failed to notice that a serious crime was taking place in his territory, and it could have been a serious matter. The Duke of Bernstein also limited his daughter's escort, which almost led to a diplomatic incident with another territory. The guards also failed to protect her who entrusted to them by their lord. All of them have a point, and it can't be the responsibility of just one person. Then all of us must take responsibility and use it as a lesson for the future so that this kind of situation will never happen again. Yes, this incident would not have happened if everyone had taken proper measures. I can assure you that nothing like this will ever happen again in my territory. I can assure you that nothing like this will ever happen again in my territory. Next time, I will protect the lady at all costs. Everyone said their determination with a mysterious look on their face. Well, we'll have to work out the details of how we're going to carry out that resolution, but for now, let's finish this. Fortunately, Lily was not injured. That's the kid you often bring over to our house to play with, right? I'll come to your house later to thank you. You might be surprised, Master. It would be a surprise if Lord and the Duke of another territory all came to workshop to thank me. He might be shocked to find out who I am, or regular visitor. Please be generous with reward for May. If it May was not with me, this rescue wouldn't have been possible. I told about the magic plane M1 that Mio invented and the last cover fire with the magic shotgun. What? That's a military revolution in the making. You have a terrible talent. Eberhard, how dare you spit on such a genius? Well, I just happened to find it. May's talents seem to be frightening even to those who are in charge of the affairs of the country. As a lord, this is a talent that they want to capture. They may regret that they did not realize that such a talent was lying dormant. Maybe there are geniuses lying around in places we don't normally pay attention to. It's not the world we live in, but there have been men who came from commoner backgrounds and rose to power. It is not surprising that anything can happen. You're absolutely right. I'm going to do my best to keep up with them. The three of them, who had experienced the bitterness of Lily's kidnapping, each expressed their own thoughts. Speaking of which, what happened to the merchant and Felix? I asked my father, curious about the, the people who had made this incident the most complicated. 
I'm sure the noblemen who rule the estate have a gag order in place, as they don't want the bad news of the Duchess being taken prisoner to be spread around, but there's no need for secrecy when I'm the one in charge. The merchant will be confiscated and executed, Felix was kept alive because he might have some use for us, but he's injured. He still hasn't woken up. Execution, that's fair enough. I don't think Felix would listen to if he woke up. That's why we're always on the lookout for him, just in case he wakes up. It's Felix. I'm sure Felix will be able to break out of jail even if he's badly injured. For now, you should stay by Lily's side for a while longer. She'll want to be with you. Do me a favor, too. Go play with her. I'll leave you to it. I finished what I needed I headed back to Lily. It's not that I volunteered to talk to them. It was because I needed to as a party and as the next head of the family. Of course I want to talk to girls. I wonder what she's doing now, probably having tea in the garden with May and Sister Noel. I headed to the garden, excited about the leisurely girl time to come. Eight spoke asterisk. Well, it's time to grow up from here. How about a reward or the Arendelle workshop? I've heard that the craftsman's is quite skilled. Wouldn't it be a good idea to embrace them as your personal craftsman's? That's a good idea, but if we do that, they might react if there's a problem. If that's the case, I'll have to make him the first of my business partners. As a lord, whenever you have to deal with them, I have to order the work from that workshop. Or perhaps you could give them preferential treatment in terms of taxes and patents. Well, since I'm a duke, I suppose the reward would be money and goods. That's good, my lord. You're so easygoing. How can you say that when you have so many men in your own lands? Ha ha. Ha ha. In the parlor where Eberhard left off, the dirty laugh. Chapter 49 Side, Henriette Lily von Bernstein Father I have a question for you. What is it, Lily? Tell me. The day I returned to the dukedom, I was sitting in a chair facing my father. It was not a meal or tea time. I have something serious to discuss. This time, I was saved by Hal. But from now on, I don't want to be being protecting all the time by him. Continue. Perhaps sensing my seriousness, my father also became serious and listened to me. Hal is very strong. I'm very proud of him as his bride. But I also don't want to just be protected. I also want to become a strong person who can stand by his side and support him. H.N. Eberhard is a boy who is so strong that it can be said that he is a out of the ordinary for his age. Even though his parent is Northern Generals it can be said that it is a Gens. It's hard to believe it. Father is as strict as ever. But he thinks things through before he says something. That's why I'm willing to listen to him even though he's strict. I understand. But I want to spend the rest of my life with Hal. I'll do anything for that. This is my own way of showing my feelings for him. It seems that you're stubborn about it. So what do you want to do? I want training in magic, father. I have a little more magic power than average person. I'm not as good as Hal, but I think I have the potential to be a mage. Magic. I've heard that training in magic is hard one. Will you be able to endure it? I will. If I can't, do this I don't have the right to be with Hal Dash. I want to be someone who is worthy of him I don't want to just be protected by Hal. Hearing my declaration, father closed his eyes and was thinking for a while. I wonder if will he allow me to learn magic, or will he not? Is fine. I'll send a trusted mage to teach you. Just remember, you said it yourself. Just don't foray what you say. Of course, father. Thanks for that. Hal, I'll do my best to become stronger and I'm going to become a woman who can stand next to you. Then we'll be together. Until then, I won't visit you. That's what I decide for myself. But please don't mind if I visit you once in a while, okay? Sighed, Mayor Rendell. My lord, my lord. What are you doing here in such a hot and humid place? When my dad came out with a surprised voice, Hal and his father and Lily's father's duke were standing in front of my house. I did. The surroundings are noisy due to the rugged faces, and the people on the road stop and fall down. The Duke said, My daughter has been very much indebted to your daughter, and I wanted to thank her. 
The duke said so and gave his father a package that seemed to be heavy. The duke's daughter? Is there something wrong with our store? My father, who doesn't know what's going on, is in a state of panic. It's quite interesting to watch from the side. No, that's not why I'm here. Following the duke's words, the servant accompanying the duke explained the situation to him in detail. As he listened to the story, father finally seemed to understand the situation. Hmm, may. When did you achieve something like this I mean, the child that always came to our house was the legitimate sons of the Lord. I'm sorry for calling you a bowler, please forgive me. Ha ha, it's too much, master. It's okay to call me a bowler, like always. Also, May's unique way of speaking is just like yours, it's funny. Hal is smiling happily. When Hal looks happy, I feel happy, too. It's a strange thing. It's a small and dirty workshop, but... Well, you're in my way. Excuse me. Sorry to disturb you. The Duke, the Lord, Hal, and his guards came into Arendelle workshop one after another. It's kinda troublesome. To be honest, I want everyone except Hal to leave as soon as possible. So, about the reward. Hal's father started to speak. Yes. You can give it to her directly but she's still a child. I'll let her take the reward once again when she will be older, but for now I've decided it's better to give the reward to your Arendelle workshop. To my workshop, you mean? Yes. I've heard that this workshop boasts of a very high level of technology. I've also heard that they've created a number of new inventions. That probably refers to the numerous inventions I've created with HAL, such as ball bearings and magic power battery. I enjoy developing them, but making them is a hassle, so I just teach the workers at the workshop how to make them and leave the rest to them. So, I want the Arendelle workshop to be owned by Fahrenheit family. Owned? Father jumped up in surprise. Well, I can understand his feeling. If they become a client, we will be given priority for work, our income will improve, and above all, it will be stable. Unless employer, the nobleman, is forced to change his ways we don't have to worry about working for him. For craftsmen who are not good at business, this is something to drool over. I'm sure you'll be able to find a way to make it work. Eventually, we'll be able to buy up and merge with other small workshops that are struggling to stay afloat, and we'll be happy if they become even bigger than they are now. This workshop, which I inherited from my father, is now my own workshop. It was worth the effort to come here from my hometown, my father. My grandson has done such a great job. The father is muttering something thinking about his now deceased grandfather. I'm thinking of going with such a policy for now, if that's okay with you. If you don't like it, you can refuse. I won't complain. I'm glad Al said that. It's impossible for us commoners to refuse a proposal from a nobleman. I have no intention of refusing, but the fact that he give a choice proves that he care about me that much. This makes me happy. It's absurd to refuse Oh, we, the Arendelle workshop, would be delighted to be owned by the Frontier Count family. Well, good. I will do my very best. If our workshop will be owned by them the facilities of the smithy will be improved. I'm excited to think that I can work on even more inventions from now on. If Hal asks me for help again, as he did this time, I will polish my skills even more so that I can be of help then as well, and I will create many more inventions. Chapter 50 Side, Eberhard Karlheinz von Flensburg Fahrenheit Eberhard What is it dad? I will training you today. When you're done eating, come to the training grounds. Okay. As I was eating my breakfast, my father informed me with an unusually serious look. It was customary for him to tell me whether or not he was going to train me, but today was different. After finishing my breakfast and getting ready, I headed for the training grounds in the backyard. In the training grounds, my father was waiting for me with his arms crossed in meditation. Hello. Eberhard, I'm going to teach you the North Shogun Bushin style Yura. What, that? The North Shogun Bushin Yura. It is a martial art full of secrets that have never been recorded and that my father has never taught me. In the front, we mainly practice basic auxiliary magic such as kata, body movements, and body strengthening, but what we will do today I have no idea. Since all the elements necessary for normal martial arts are included in the front, 
it is even more difficult to predict what they will do in the back. So far, I hadn't learned it because he thought I wasn't ready for it, but maybe my fight with Felix had changed his mind. It's strange for me to say this, but the secret behind the extraordinary strength of the northern shogunate Shinryu lies in this back. The secret of strength. It's not just a mental argument like I can't lose because I have something to protect. Normally, this behind-the-curtain training starts when you turn 10. Eberhard is only 6 years old, but I've decided that you're ready. Just remember. This behind-the-scenes stuff comes with its own dangers. Yeah, I know. Good. Fadhei uncrossed his arms and took a stance. Watch me. As soon as he said that, he worked up the magic in his body and began to strengthen his entire body with magic. This is the North Shogun Bushin Ryuura, the inner form of the clove wrapping. It's not just a body enhancement. It is difficult to achieve such a high level of enhancement with Sirank non-attribute magic body enhancement. Try to attack. How much power I Ned put into it? At a level that would kill an average person. Okay. I worked up my magic power and casted a moderately powerful shock bullet there was no way for him to avoid it, and that impact bullet hit him directly, but he was not injured. Not even a scratch. That's not all. Dad continued, and began to move at high speed. He ran around in all directions at a speed that the current me could never achieve even with the application, shock. Ha! Dog on. In addition, I slam my fist into a huge rock that seems to be five or six meters high and shatter it. The robe. His demonstration ended with a series of amazing moves that could hardly be considered human skills. I'm going to show you how to do this. This is the robe. You will learn this inner form robe and another form general's armor. The robe and general's armor. There are only two elements to the northern shogun at Shinryu. If the robe is a technique that strengthens from within, the general's armor is a technique that strengthens from the outside. What is the general armor is? It's relatively easy compared to clothed. You are already using something similar to it. What? Something similar to the general's armor? It's a magic blade. I'm sure you've already mastered the materialization of magic, and with your vast amount of magic power, it will be easy for you to master the general's armor. Having said that, Father now let the magic power out of his body and materialize as if it were covering his body. It's a magic armor. This is need for defense. However, as soon as he said that, the Father immediately deactivated the General's armor. It's just that this is a terribly inefficient technique, and with my amount of magic power, I will be exhausted fast. That's why I don't use it often. I see. That's why I always only use the cloak when I was training. The cloak requires very delicate magic control techniques. Ah, you can say that the reason why the North Shogun Bushin Ryu is the strongest is because of this robe. The successive Northern generals have made their strength known to the world by inheriting that technology. Great. If you can master this, you'll have a full prepared. There will be nothing left for me to teach you. So let's get starting. But it usually takes ten years to master this. It took me eight years. That's because it's such a powerful technique. It's not something that can be mastered in a year or two. It's just that you have an extraordinary amount of magic power. You should be able to use it many times more than average person. Maybe you'll be able to learn it much faster than the other. Whoa! Then teach me how to do it right away. All right. Let's see if you can surpass me. Sure. My fame after defeating Felix Groen without me knowing it. The more powerful I became, the more people there would be to exploit or eliminate me, even if I was just a mob. That's why I have to become stronger in order to protect myself from such people, and to protect people who are important to me. But how can it be that the stronger I get, the more trouble comes my way when I'm trying to get stronger to protect people who are important to me, is it unreasonable? I don't know if I'm just being selfish. Well, the bottom line is that I just have to become strong enough to blow all that trouble away. The only reason I have so many ties is because I don't have the strength to break them down and push forward. I'll be strong enough to protect Lily, May, my family, and all other the people whom I care about, and to will be able to stand any opponent that will go against me. I don't think it's impossible in the slightest. I have a unique skill called continuity as power. 
hard work will not betray me. Chapter 51 Hello, Silver. You're on a great shape today. Hey, Ernst, you're the one who's doing all the work. I'm no match for you, Silver. You're a kid, but you an S-rank adventurer. The heat of the day had abetted, and the evening came. At the Adventurers Guild in Heidberg, there was a lot of bragging going on among the adventurers. The number of monsters tends to be higher in summer than in winter, perhaps because monsters are also living creatures. The luxury of the day was determined by how many of the increasing number of prey person could hunt. This was a topic that came up whenever the adventurers who didn't have money to spend at night met each other. Ernst is only 20 years old, but he has a B-plus rank. I think he has a bright future. Hey, Ernst and Silver, how about a drink? Just then, a barman invitation came from the tavern attached to the guild. Oh, I'm coming. I'm sorry, I have to go home. See you next time. What the hell? This thing again. Ha ha. I'll let you be this time. I smiled bitterly and left the place. When I left the guild, the streets were crowded with people returning home after work. Some were hurrying home to their families. Some were going to have a drink with their co-workers. There was a wide variety of faces, including the owner of a liquor store, who was throwing up his arms as if his work was just about to begin. Their faces are all cheerful. This is proof of the peaceful life in this town. When will you be back, brother? As I was walking home, my communication device rang and I received a message from my younger brother, Albert, who will turn nine this year. I'm coming. What's for dinner this evening? Aged horn beefsteak, with an exotic jean sauce that my likes. I'm looking forward to it. I'll hurry home. All right. Take care. I cut off the communication with Albert and hurried to the home. The sun was about to set. Eight spoke asterisk. Welcome home, brother. Welcome back, brother. Hal, you're late. We all got tired of waiting. I'm sorry. I hunted down a green boar for you. Oh, I see. Welcome back. Yeah, I'm home. Have you been a good boy? Mmm. My brother Albert, my seven-year-old sister Rosetta, my fourteen-year-old sister Noelle, and my two-year-old twin brothers Sieghart and Charlotte greeted me. Welcome back, Hal. Eberhard, go wash your hands quickly. We'll have dinner when you get back. Yes. Mom and Dad came out, and now the whole family was here. A family of eight, parents and six children. In modern Japan, this would be a large family. Master Hal, let me take your clothes. Thank you, Elisa. Elisa has grown up a lot. I think she was 26 this year. She's a grown woman now. Today's meal was a horned beefsteak with jian sauce, a soy sauce-like seasoning I had found in the market a few years ago and which was used in the East. I hurried to the washroom as my heart racing. Eight spoke asterisk. Six years had passed since my fight with Felix. After a while, Felix woke up, but as soon as he realized that he couldn't use his right arm, he bit his tongue off and killed himself. Felix's choice to die on his own instead by the hands of others was understable, but at the same time, it made me feel sad. He would never be forgiven for what he had done, but his swordsmanship and self-honesty could have been used for good. However, there was nothing I could do about it he may have been an enemy, but I had taken his life. As the next lord, I will have to make ruthless decisions at times, and I have to be ethical, but also responsible. I'm sorry to say this to Lily, but it was a good experience that made me realize this clearly and strongly. That's how I feel mentally. I was almost an adult from the start, so I didn't grow much else. But on the physical side, I have grown a lot. I was six years old back then, but now I'm twelve, and I'm starting to acquire the features of an older brother. I've also grown a lot taller. I'm about 150 centimeters tall. I had grown to the tall of an average first-year Japanese junior high school student. As expected, Lily, my bride, has grown up to be a neat and pretty young lady, but inside, she's a tomboy, and she's a great one. It's a blessing in disguise that since the incident, she's been very derated only towards me, so it's a relief that she doesn't hit me so unreasonably. Besides, 
I still have a memories from my previous life, and my mental age is almost 30 years old when added up. It's so cute to see a girl of same age being so picky. A son or a childhood friend is the best. However, she is very hard on May. Lily sees her as an enemy because she sticks to me unconsciously. Ah, uh, Lily's specialty is ice, which is a relatively rare attribute for a girl who has learned magic, and the of the women between Lily and May is like the Cold War between the United States and Russia. However, she doesn't seem to dislike her from the bottom of her heart since she saved her life. You can find a lot of people who are looking for the best way to get the best results. That being said, I guess I couldn't stand May being sticky all the time to me. After making extraordinary efforts with her guts and tenacity, she woke up about two years ago to the magic of spatio-temporal attributes, she population of the imperial kingdom is about 20 million, so even in an imperial kingdom with a relatively large number of mages, it's a rare attribute that only about 200 people have. Thanks to this, she now uses the A-rank space-time attribute magic transference to come to my house every week to play. She says it's because she's practicing her magic, but in reality, she just wants to see me. She's just a Tsundera. I can't help but think how cute she is. And then there's May. She was my second childhood friend, but she turned into a monster. The blood of a dwarf was terrifying. First of all, as dwarves, don't grow that tall. May is about 130 centimeters tall, which is quite small for a 12-year-old. She is about the size of a third grader. However, from what I knew about dwarves from fantasy, stories I felt that she had grown a lot more than I expected. This is because it is not uncommon for stories to portray dwarves as a race that is less than a meter, or even a few dozen centimeters in some cases, in height. However, the height of the master and other dwarven craftsmen in the Arendel workshop was less than 160 centimeters, which is about the same as an adult woman in the highlands, so it is normal for dwarves to be a little shorter than humans. It seems that dwarves are not as small as they appear in stories. Now, these are a race of dwarves where the men become muscular and gory. So what happens to the women? The correct answer is a whipped bimbo. To be honest, it might have been better to go the lowly girl route like the dwarves in fantasy stories. I've always wondered why in so many stories, male dwarves are physically blessed and females are infants. If the physical characteristics of the race were gender neutral, wouldn't women be just as physically developed as men? And that's exactly what happened. If she had been a lowly, I would have been convinced that's what she was, even if I couldn't explain why. In reality, May is only 12 years old, but she has grown a big-breasted lowly titty with an e-cup size that is unbelievable. It's really shameful. It was so awful that my poor woke up for the first time in a long time. What's worse than anything else is that May's hugging habit still hasn't been cured. She hasn't shown any signs of hugging anyone other than me, and I'm sure she has no intention of changing it, but I can't stand being hugged. I'm sure she has no intention of fixing it, but I can't stand being hugged. Thanks to this, I'm exhausted every morning. I think I need to seriously think about a nourishing menu. Thanks to the existence of monsters in this world, there's no shortage of ingredients for that kind of menu. To be honest, my sexual awakening in this life was May. In addition, the more I work out, the more my energy will grow, thanks to the fact that continuity is power. It's not just that it doesn't do any good, but it might even interfere with my daily life, so I'm carefully with that. It's a good thing that I'm still able to control myself, but I'm worried that I might do something awful to May soon. I. I didn't trust myself. Chapter 52 other people have also changed a lot. For example, my younger brother Albert, who was three years old back then, now has grown up into a good person who loves his older brother. This is also the result of my education as his older brother. Recently, he seems to be learning the front of the northern shogun at Bushinryu from my father, and the day when he and I will be able to train together in earnest may be coming soon. I need to devote myself to becoming stronger so that I won't be embarrassed as an older brother at that time. My sister, Rosetta, has also changed a lot. I mean, she was only one year old at the time and was just buzzing about, so of course she would change. The one who has changed the most is definitely Rosetta. She is a very serious and good-hearted girl. She has a gentle personality, and even though she is seven years old, she is very serious about her studies, piano, 
I call it piano because it looks like a musical instrument, embroidery, etiquette, and ballroom dancing as a noblewoman. Rosetta is a true young lady. I'm sure she'll be happy. No, I'll make you happy, big brother. I'm the eldest. And my youngest twins. They are identical twins, a boy and a girl, and Charlotte is my big sister. My younger brother Sieghart seems to be getting along well with Charlotte, and I'm looking forward to their future. They are both two years old now, and they are cute little babies who drink milk. I think it's time to give them some baby food. My sister Noelle she is getting even more unreasonable and violent. She's got the education and cunning of a young lady, and she's perfect on the outside, so she's a real pain in the ass. I know it's not the original meaning of the word, but I secretly call her a shyster. The other day, she stole the biggest piece of meat from me. I can't believe she's the daughter of a frontier count. I will never forgive her for that. That's all. Next is the maid, Elisa. She turned 26 and got married. Her partner is Anthony, who is also a servant. I thought I've heard that name before, but it's the guy who used to be a young employee of the administration department. I heard that Anthony had fallen in love with Elisa at first sight when he and Elisa had gone to look for a cart. In other words, I was the cupid of their love. As someone who's known Elisa since I was born, I'm honestly glad that she's happy. In this world, getting married at 26 is quite late. The reason why she got married now is because I'd grown up and I don't need much help anymore. As a personal maid of the son of a noble family, she can't marry irresponsibly until her master is grown up. In that case, he was able to marry Elisa relatively early among the exclusive maids, probably because she was able to become independent much earlier due to my personality problems. Anyway, Elisa is getting married. I'm sad that I won't be able to enjoy the feeling of being held by her soft breasts, but I have May. I don't have a problem with boobs. So, I hope she will be happy to the fullest. By the way, since she is servant of our family, I talked to my father and presented to her a wedding gift and newlywed vacation. I would be very happy if she could as child soon. There are still other strange people in the world. May's father, the master of the Arendelle workshop. He was a top-notch blacksmith, but he was also a top-notch manager. Since he was appointed as the official craftsman for the Frontier Count family, he has developed the workshop into one of the biggest workshops in the empire with his overflowing business talent. He began by buying up struggling workshops in his territory, recruited craftsmen from other workshops, retired skilled blacksmiths as mentors, used them to train newcomers, invested in equipment, and conducted research and development. By allocating all resources to the training of new employees, capital investment, and research and development, and by placing his daughter at the head of the R&D team, he established a solid system that combines hardware and software, and achieved rapid growth in a short time. No matter how much knowledge I had from my previous life, it was nearly impossible for me to manage the company so smoothly. All I could do was to back up the reforms he made. The fact that he was able to grow the workshop to this level was a result of his talent and hard work. Perhaps the repercussions of the series of reforms have had an effect on the town, but for the past two years, the tax revenue in the territory has been increasing slightly, and my father has praised me with a smile on his face, saying, you also have talent as a future lord. However, the Fahrenheit family is a military aristocracy family entrusted with the defense of the northern part of the imperial kingdom. No matter how talented I am, my actual duties will be limited. Of course, I'll do the bare minimum. But basically, most of the management of the territory is systematic and left to the civil servants. This is like the bureaucracy and local civil servants in Japan, or the police force in ancient China. It's better for the management of a developed territory with a certain amount of history to have a systematic system of governance by appointing talented people. It's still fresh in my mind that when I told my father this, he denied it, saying, that's not true. It doesn't matter how capable subordinates are, if the top management who uses them is incompetent. It's true, as they say. In Japan, the bureaucrats are all extremely talented, but when the ministers and prefectural governors are incompetent, the entire country and local governments are burdened. On the other hand, if the top officials are excellent, the whole country seems to be doing well to some extent. So it seems that even if you are a military aristocrat, you should not take internal affairs lightly. Speaking of other things that had changed, 
I remembered one more thing that had changed, the uncle at the grilled meat stall I frequented. He had finally succeeded in setting up his own store in one of the shopping arcades, probably because he had been selling delicious food in an earnest and friendly manner. He had hired new employees and cooks, and get off to a good start. I took May and the artisans from the Arendelle workshop out to dinner to celebrate the opening. They've been adding more liquors and new menu dishes, and they seem to have a good number of repeat customers. It's good to see a good restaurant continue to grow. Well, that's about the only thing that has changed around me. My father and mother haven't changed at all, and other than them, there aren't many people around me who have changed. The only one who has changed is me. I've grown a lot stronger in the past six years. I've learned how to use, shock, in many different ways, and my magic power and physical strength have increased considerably. For the time being, my status is as follows. Eberhard Karlheinz von Flensburg Fahrenheit Life Force, 536-536 Magic Power, 51692-51692 Physical Ability, 693 Intelligence, 138 Magic Attribute Specific Magic, Shock Specific Skill, Continuity is Power First of all, the Life Force, or HP, has increased to a certain extent. The reason for this is because of the training of the North Shogun Bushinryu and working as an adventurer. I would say that I am almost one of the best 12-year-olds Pepol in the country. Even if you compare me to adult adventurers and soldiers, I am probably one of the best. Next is magic power. This has grown to an unbelievable degree. I wonder if there's anyone who has more magic than me. The rate of increase is so high that it makes me think so. To put it bluntly, I think I'm as good as the people in the court magic division, one of the three major divisions that are renowned as elite. Next was physical ability. It's improved a lot since I was six years old, when I was about average, and now, even without any magical enhancements, I can take on a pack of goblins, orcs, or even a bunch of hoodlums in my average state. In terms of rank, I was in the upper D or lower C ranks. It would be hard to make it in the Knights of the King's Guard but I'm sure I could make it in any army or knightly order around. And that's not the biggest thing that changed. For the past six years, I've been desperately training in the Northern Shogun at Bushinria backstage from morning to night, literally using my enormous amount of magical power. Finally, one year ago, I won the final fight against my master, my father, in a duel in which we both gave it our all, and my training with father was finished. It was a difficult time for me, as if I were vomiting blood. It was a series of hardships that made it impossible for me to even do my occasional works as an adventurer. My muscles and magic circuits were torn to shreds, and I had to forcefully heal them with recovery magic and train again. But I was not discouraged. To be honest, I felt like I was going to lose it many times, but looking at Lily, May, and my younger siblings, I couldn't bring myself to skip the training to gain the power to protect them. Unlike in my previous life, in this world, the more I worked, the more I was rewarded. So there was no way I wouldn't make an effort. I told myself, I'm not going to let my loved ones suffer. I was probably the strongest and youngest of all the Northern Generals at 11 years old, who mastered the Northern General Bushinryu Yura in five years of training. Chapter 53 The training of the North Shogun Bushinryu inside was extremely fierce. It is a training that would not have been possible without big amount of magic power, recovery magic, and the unique skill practice makes perfect. It. I mastered the general's armor in one year. I had always been able to use magic swords, so it didn't take me that long to master the materialization of magic power. The amount of magic power that I have is inordinately large. In contrast, it took me a very long time to learn the clothe and tie. It took me two years to master it to a certain extent, and then three years to get it to a level where it could use it in actual combat. As I sat at the table, I remember the hard days of training. Eberhard. I'm sure you're skilled in manipulating magic. What's the difference between normal body enhancement and cloak? Normal body enhancement makes the body stronger and more vital by concentrating the magic power on the part you want to strengthen. But this is not the case with clothing. It looks more like it's spreading to the entire body in detail. That's pretty close, but that's the right answer is. 
it is true that the magic power is spread to every corner of the body. Then how are you doing it? To start the training of the North Shogun Bushinryu inside, Father posed a difficult question. If I were asked to guess how they do it without any prior knowledge, I don't think I could normally answer. Hmm. Every inch of the magic power circuit is being expanded. But since magic circuits are not real organs of the body, they are not supposed to lead to body enhancement. I take a deep breath and try to collect my thoughts. It's not a magic circuit. The expansion of magic circuits is useful for using magic, but it only increases the power of magic and does not lead to the enhancement of the body. So even if you train your magic circuits and make them thicker, it may lead to an increase in the power of the body enhancement, but it will not spread the enhancement to every corner. If you try to force it, the amount of magic power consumed will be outrageous. In other words, you can't just keep on thinking about increasing the power like you do in normal magic training. A change in thinking is necessary. I don't get it. The creator who came up with this must have been an amazing person. Sighing deeply once more, I look up at the sky. The air in Heidberg is clear. Japan was one of the cleanest countries in the world, but even so, the air in cities like Tokyo was more polluted than deep in the mountains of the countryside due to exhaust gas and dust. Heidberg is a provincial city located right next to a vast expanse of nature. The air is very clean, and more importantly, the stars are very visible. The starry sky from air is completely different from the one on Earth. There is no summer triangle, or iron, or the Milky Way. There are many similar things, but they are different from what I remember on Earth. It's daytime now, so it's impossible to see them. Oh, could it be? I looked at my father again. Did you come up with something? Hey, can you show again? Oki. The magical power exudes from the inside of his body as if it was smog and wraps to his body. I was convinced of the true identity of that thing I saw it getting darker and darker with each pulse. Pulse. Blood, to be exact. When Dad heard this, his eyes widened in admiration, followed by a grin and he said. You got it. The secret of the cloak's ability to spread magic throughout the body lies in the blood. Yes. Let me explain. Then you found the answer to your question. Faith began to explain in detail about the robe. As you know, normal body enhancement only involves concentrating magic power on the part of the body you want to strengthen. You can get a lot of power and strength just by doing that, but there is a limit to that. I know that better than anyone. I can also use body enhancement. The amount of my magic power is almost 30,000, so it should be possible to use a very high level of body enhancements. However, in reality, once I strengthen my body to a certain level, no matter how much magic I put into it, I cannot strengthen it to that level after that. This is generally called the wall of enhancement in the wizard world. This is true for most any kind enhancement magic that can be called enhancement, whether it is body enhancement or material enhancement, it was common knowledge in the wizard world that there is a limit to enhancement. But in the Bushinryu, it goes even deeper than that. It doesn't just use brutal force to strengthen the body, it changes the way you think and strengthens it in a new way. The technique is called blood demon mixing. First, the compressed magic power is collected in the heart, and then the magic power and blood are mixed in the heart. Then, the blood tinged with magic power is spread to every corner of the body through the blood vessels. Blood runs through the entire body, from the tip of the head to the tip of the toes. By distributing magic power densely throughout the body through the blood, it is possible to strengthen the body with a density that is much higher than that of ordinary magic power enhancement. The amount of magic power consumed is large, but if you master it, there is little waste and you can achieve the highest efficiency in strengthening. The magic power that is spread through the bloodstream to the entire body blows out from the sweat glands to cover the surface of the body, covering the entire body in a thin layer. This technique is called cloak and clothe because it looks as if you are wearing the magic power like a robe. I had chill on my back as I listened to my father's explainings. It wasn't because I was scared. It was because I was shocked by how amazing it was. The magic power is sent to the whole body through the blood. In essence, this means that every single cell in the body will be strengthened with magical power. In this day and age, when the concept of cells has not yet been discovered, the idea of strengthening the body on a cellular level was amazing. 
I wonder how brilliant the First Lord Fahrenheit really was. Just be careful, don't suddenly mix blood and magic in the heart. Why? Because if you do it wrong way, you will die. In the past, people have collapsed and died during training, or their hearts stopped beating, or they survived but could not speak properly. You have to mix the magic power little by little and strengthen your whole body step by step. I see. The power of the heart muscle is strengthened abnormally, and the blood pressure becomes too high, which may cause a cerebral hemorrhage or a heart attack due to the sudden magical power in the heart. This is why it is strictly forbidden to do it at once. There is a reason why this training is supposed to start at the age of 10. The adjustment is endlessly difficult, but the more you master it, the stronger your body and combat power will be, beyond human limits. This is the reason why the Fahrenheit family has outstanding combat power, because they can use this cloak. Is amazing. It may take some time, but I think you can learn it. As far as I know, there are not many people of your age as talented as you. I'll do my best you, father. I'll do my best. Keep up the good work. Can you say the same things in a few years? Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. This is how my hard and demanding training began. Chapter 54 In order to learn to aerobe, you must first learn to mix blood. I believe you can't use attribute magic, can you? Yes. Then I have no choice but to call Teresa. He went back to the mansion to call Mother. About ten minutes later, Dad came back with Mother. Hal, you're training in the Bushinryu. You're doing great. As usual, Mom was optimistic. But in a way, she is even more strict than my dad, so I can't relax. Teresa, can you use the water magic to make a pure water ball? Pure water ball? Okay, water dot. Mom is an A-plus ranked mage, and she can do this level of magic with just one line of chanting. My mom is usually a mage who uses runes and magic circles and doesn't use chanting much, but chanting is more convenient when you need to use a little magic. It's a beautiful water ball. My dad is praising the water ball as it floats in the air, but I'm not here to see my parents flirting. So, do I mix this with magic? I had a feeling that if I left them alone, I'd have more brothers and sisters soon so I asked my dad for the sake of my own training. Yes. You get that idea. Add magic power to this pure water ball. But do it evenly. If there's any bias or if you feel the concentration is too thin, you will be failed. He was very strict from the very beginning. I think it's better to raise the bar a little at a time since it's my first time. If you can't do this, you might as well give up training in the Bushinryu. I see. So you're making it tough on me in order to inspire me. Then let's give it a try, with my unique skill I should be able to do that. I never thought I'd be able to do it in a day. You're the one who said I should be able. To do this much. That was just for the sake of motivating you. Fuck. I don't care. It was a way to get you motivating. Yeah, but you know what? Hal, you're amazing. That's our son. Yeah. It's late today, so let's call it a night. Oh, we're done. I am still in good. Shape. It's going to be even harder tomorrow. Get some rest for now. Okay. So the next day, I'm going through hell. Next I try do it with water from the river. Yeah, I can do it. What the hell is that? Is it hard? It doesn't even DRW out at all. It's not difficult at all. The subtle impurities in the river water block the flow of magic power, and the magic power doesn't spread evenly at all. It would be easier if you were told to paint the air with color. Do you know why? Impurities are getting in the way. You can't do this unless you clean it up. But that's not the case, is it? Then Dad put out his hand and let the magic flow, and the magic spread to the river water and made it homogeneous. What the? It's because the impurities have been analysis searched and the magic power has been adjusted so that it is exactly the same value as the water. Every single impurity? It's not exactly one by one, because I am pouring magic power into impurities of similar composition altogether, but let's put it this way. That's a lie, I shouted. Don't raise your voice here. How many impurities do you think there are in your blood? That's something I'm more familiar with from my previous life. 
blood is made up of about half blood cells and the other half is plasma. If 90% of the plasma is water, it means that the remaining 10% is not water. Blood cells are not water as a matter of course, and if to look at the blood as a whole, about 60% of it should be non-watered, it's very hard to get the magic power to flow evenly. This is a very difficult task. Well, you just need to take your time. It took me 8 years, too. I can understand why it usually takes more than 10 years. It is not a skill that can be learned overnight. It's not something you can learn overnight. You start with the river water, and when the river water stage is passed, we will be on the next stage the swamp water. It would be better if we had sea water, but the sea is too far away from here. Once we will be done with swamp water, we can try with blood. But when you do it with blood, you should practice with small animals first. It's dangerous. Yes, I understand. And so the days of the daily training began. About two years later, when I was eight years old, I was finally able to use the blood demon mixture to some extent. I was able to channel a small amount of magic power into my own blood as well. Alright, I think you passed the first step. The first stage means there's a second step? To be honest, I don't want to go through any more painful training, I thought as I asked my father. No, what we're going to do is the same, we're just going to increase the accuracy in this second step. Good, I can do that. In fact, my motivation is quite high because the results are visibly. Even though I've only been able to do a little bit of blood demon mixing, it's enough to give me the same effect as body strengthening at full strength. The amount of magic power consumed has been saved considerably. If I become more proficient at this, I'm sure I'll become much stronger than I've ever been. The general's armor training also seems to be going well. I've already almost perfected the materialization of magic power. Here. I also activate general's armor for a change of mood. One of the mysteries of the Hokushobu Shinryu, which has mastered the realization of magical power, is unfolded at once. Ha, ah, you still have an amazing amount of magic. I think no one can beat you at that. I walk around, clad in the silhouette of a translucent magical giant that is several meters tall. I swing the upper half of the titan's arm and slam my fist into the ground. And the ground caved in like a crater with a loud sound. The ground cratered with a loud thud. How's your defense? I'm much better at defense. I released my newly developed guided impact munition into the sky and guided it towards myself. Several of them hit the armor I was wearing, but the armor didn't even shake. There's also this. T, this time they are slightly larger than the previous ones. Shock reaction armored aegis. What? At the same time as I shouted the name of the spell, General's armor was dyed silvery white. A guided impact bullet is coming towards me. However, they all disappeared without hitting me directly, blocked by silver armor. Is it offset by emitting shock waves of opposite phase now? At first glance, the father will detect the true identity. It's a stone's throw. I'm not calling myself the Northern General to date. Yeah. I tried to combine it with my unique skill. Name it Silver Armored Aegis. Have you ever heard of explosion response armor? It's like the brick tiles on old tanks that explode in response to an enemy attack, and the shock wave neutralizes the attack. Inspired by this, I tried to incorporate shock into the general's armor this time. This is the reason why the magic giant appears to shine in a silvery white color as a result of its shock reflecting properties that also reflect light to some extent. It's amazing. Do you want to maintain this amount of general's armor and make further improvements? What is it? Well, by that it's not normal. When I'm materializing magical power, enormous magical power and precise control power are needed. The materialization of magical power is, so to speak, like constantly exercising magic. As soon as get rid of it even for a moment, the control of the magical power will be lost and the clouds will disappear. However, since I was born and my ego was budding, I have repeatedly trained magic power circulated and are manipulated every day, so this level of application was a piece of cake for me. It took me two years to finally clear the first stage, so I guess I understand how difficult it is to put on clothes. But it's strange, because the general's armor is so easy to learn, but the clothed armor is insanely difficult. I muttered to myself, to which my father replied with a serious face. 
In fact, the general's armor is supposed to be difficult as well. Really? Yeah. The armor of the general is quite strong on its own, but not as strong as the cloak. If it's similar, it's also partially used in other ways. The general's armor? It's true that it has a great defense and a good attack power, but if you ask me if it's on the same level as the armor, I have to tilt my head. It seems that the general's armor chooses the right person to use it. I've lost it once. Oh, really? So the general's armor that we are using now may not be the general's armor in the true sense of the word. Originally, it was said that general's armor and robe were profound techniques that could only be completed when the two were combined. After a beat, the father continued. This is what my late father. And your grandfather Klaus told me, so I do not know the details, because my father also told me that he heard it from his father, and there is no record of it. It's a shocking story. Even the desperately strong robe that my father used was still incomplete. Eberhard. Yeah? You must complete this technique. You have not yet mastered the robe, but if you are so proficient with the general's armor, you may be able to combine the two and make it complete. I'm going to revive the Bushinryu? Well, you can take it easy on for now. It's best if you can come up with it on a whim. After all, the North Shogun Bushinryu is already the strongest martial art in the world. Dad. That's what my dad says, but as a member of the Fahrenheit family, I guess I can't give up on the idea that the actual North Shogun Bushinryu will be revived one day. Even though I have a previous life memories, I am also a member of the Fahrenheit family. I'm not afraid to make an effort to revive the true Bushinryu. Chapter 55 So that's how I learned this whole thing, and that's how I ended up able to use rope. Eberhard. What are you muttering by yourself? Sit down quickly. I was standing in front of the dinner table. I was reminiscing about my rigorous training over the past few years, and to the from the side, I looked like a vague, ill-bred ears. Oh, no, I was just thinking. The training was literally painful to the point of hell, but thanks to it, I am now able to live happily. I was successfully finished that training, and the father officially told me that I could be free for about three years before enter the Imperial Academy of Magic at the age of 15. I have memories of my previous life, and I'm almost up to the Academy's passing standards in all but history, philosophy, mathematics, and magic, which are all considered liberal arts for nobles. It's not that difficult to learn history and I'm the only one who can successfully learning magic. In addition, my fighting ability now surpasses my father's, though just barely. I had done everything I needed to do academically, and now that I didn't have to worry about my strength, I was considered to be able to handle anything that came my way, and as a result, I was quite free. Let's eat. Yes. My younger siblings were enjoying themselves. When I saw them, I naturally felt happy too. I hadn't had much luck with such feelings in my previous life, so it was a strange feeling. Eight spoke asterisk. The next day, I changed into the rough clothes I wear when I working as an adventurer and headed to May's parents' house, the Arendel workshop. May used to be an indoor person, but recently she started to come along with my adventuring activities, carrying her own weapons. According to her, I want to collect excellent materials by seeing them with my own eyes. That's why May herself doesn't have to fight much. Basically, I do the fighting and she does the appraising and collecting. However, I thought it would be inappropriate to be unarmed, so I armed myself. Hal, I'm almost ready to go. Please wait for me out front. Yes. We communicate with each other using a pendant with a communication function. Thanks to this magic tool, we can live a convenient life like modern people without having to set a detailed meeting place or time. Hello. It's been a while. When I arrived at the Arendelle workshop, May was waiting for me with a small backpack on her back and a gun that was placed around her waist. She was dressed in a shirt and chinos, looking like something out of a western movie. How's the R&D going? It's finally settled, I have something for you, Hal. What? May is an adventurer, or rather an adventurer's comrade and a smith, but she does not always balance the two on a regular basis. It's more accurate to say that she alternate between accompanying me in my research and collecting, and using the results of research and development in my workshop. And this time, the research and development period has just ended. 
so I invited her to join me on my adventure. I didn't expect that the research to draw out the mysterious power of Orokalkin would take so long, but now I've finally found a way to put it to practical use. And this is the new weapon that contains the Orokalkin, the magic sword Raikiri. Raikiri. I don't know how you learn that name. That's a nostalgic word. Raikiri. Needless to say, it is the famous sword Raikiri in Japan. A long time ago, May had seen me slashing monsters with saying Raikiri. With magical power on the branches I picked up around area, but that event influenced this naming. I saw it. I it's an embarrassing memory now, but May has brilliantly healed the wound. So, you're using Orokalkone, right? What special effects does it have? It's not just a hard metal. If you are looking for hardness, there is a metal called adamantite that is much harder than iron. It's a lot cheaper to use adamantite, which is still expensive, than to use orocalcone, which is more expensive. So why use orocalcone? The reason was that orocalcone is a metal that possesses a very rare power. In fact, artifacts such as holy swords and treasures that appear in founding myths are all made of orocalcon. Even if they are not, MSDE with pure orocalcone, some of them always contain orocalcone. Since orocalcon has a mysterious power, weapons that contain orocalcon have special abilities. What these special abilities are depends on the time, occasion, and user, and cannot be defined in general. According to some theories, it is said that they are sensitive to the user's magical power or will and manifest mysterious properties. In any case, it's a fiction that doesn't go beyond the realm of legend and since it's so valuable, there's no way it could be used for experiments, and the truth has been in the dark for the past few hundred years. However, the situation changed drastically six years ago when I discovered a large amount of mithril and orohalcon in the lantern ruins in north of Heitberg. A massive ingot of orohalcon, considered to be one of the largest in the history of the Imperial Kingdom, I've got 50% of the rights, and I'm letting the genius blacksmith Mayor Rendell do the research with the help of money, power, and connections. Strictly speaking, it is more correct to say that I approved the research because I was afraid that May would resent me if I didn't let her do the research, which she was very interested in, but as an aristocrat and a member of the upper class, I have a reputation to uphold, and to the outside world, I was the one who asked May to do the research. But let's leave the politics aside. In May's hands, most miracles are not miracles at all. I'm sure she'll be able to handle a mythical metal as normal. No, it took me a long time I didn't expect it to take so many years. But it's really powerful. Hal, please try pouring some magic power into this as e. Maybe something interesting will happen. Ah, yes. Let's see. I took the sword he handed me and pulled it out of its sheath. I'm not sure I if that mythical weapon cow weapon, but you never know if it's actually mythical until you try it. Then I'll let the magic flow through. Oh, wait a minute. Then May hides behind me. That's enough. May. It's no use. She's a non-combatant. Her technical skills are far from those of a normal person, but her physical strength is unmistakably that of a normal person. Okay, here we go. Oh. As expected, it is a mythical metal. When I tried to shed magical power, I was absorbed more and more magical power. If it is a human with little magical power, a huge amount of magical power will be absorbed at such a high speed that it will instantly fall into magical power deficiency. I continued to let the magic flow for a few seconds, and eventually the absorption of magic power subsided with a pale mechanical line running down the blade. Is this activated? Yes, I'm pretty sure it did. Hal, give it a try and see if it works. Is it safe? Will it explode or something? Probably not, Hal. Probably? From the looks I don't think this is the kind of thing that would explode with great force. It's more like a silent, terrifying presence. Mmm. I gave it a fearful shake, but nothing happened. I swung and swung again, but there was no sign of anything happening. Is. Failed. Hal, try slashing it. It's. It's steel, of course it's impossible. May showed us a lump of iron that seemed to be at least 50 centimeters thick. It was a steel ingot, a very hard steel ingot used in the forging of swords. I don't think it will break, but won't it cut? I don't know, but if the power of the orocalcone is real, it will cut. 
Hmm. Well, let's give it a try. Snap. What? You was able to cut it. Spat. Has no resistance at all. Excellent. May handed me the magic sword Raikiri. The weapon boasted a monstrous performance that could slice through a 50 centimeter steel ingot without any trouble. Chapter 56 But well, it's a legendary metal with remarkable durability. It's a lump of iron for smithing. It's not just a rock, of course, but it has a completely different durability. Orichalcon must be an amazing metal, because it can cut through it like tofu. How? Can I have a look? Oh, yes. Yes. May, the creator and researcher, asked to show her it, so I handed her the magic sword, Raikiri, without hesitation. She looked at it for a while and then handed it back to me. I'm guessing that the unusual slash you just made was probably caused by Hal's unique skill. My, shock? Yes. She continued. It seems that the Orichalcone reacts to the user's magical power in nature and amplifies it. If you try hard enough, you can do something similar with your, shock, can't you? I couldn't help but mutter something to myself as I thought of what May had said. High frequency blade. High frequency blade? I don't know much about it, but if the essence of the Orichalcone is the amplification of magic, I think it's safe to assume that the same thing can be done in general. A high-frequency blade, sometimes referred to as a vibrating sword or an ultrasonic cutter. It is a fictional scientific weapon often seen in manga and anime that vibrates blade at high speed to easily slice through even the hardest materials. Although it is fictional, it has been put to practical use in the industrial business in reality, and is said to be useful for processing hard metals. In other words, it's not a completely unfeasible science fiction weapon. How? I took out my dagger knife that was on my waist and swung it down at the iron lump lying in the shape of a dice. It wasn't quite like tofu, but the knife still managed to slice halfway through the lump of iron without breaking the blade. That's great, I got it. I transmitted a high frequency, shock, to the knife and tried to slash the iron block, but it seemed to work better than I expected although it doesn't have the same level of strength as the Raikiri, it might be a good way to get out of a tough situation. I'm sure you're right, Hal. Now then, the Raikiri is a gift for you, Hal. Is that okay? It's no good for me to have it. I'll be happy to have it. You're a researcher. Ha ha ha. Then let's go right away. I want Gad at least an A-rank magic stone today. No, wait a minute. I'll put on a mask. If I put on the silver mask, I will become an unidentified silver comet. Incidentally, the two names Silver Comet come from two sources. The silver comes from the silvery white appearance of the Aegis armor, and the comet comes because I am newcomer who appeared like a comet. I don't know how I came up with the idea, but I've been working in a secret due to fear of being exposed, and the next thing I know, people are calling me that. Well, shall we go? Yes. May and I walk together to the Adventurer's Guild. I wonder what kind of request we'll get today. Eight spoke asterisk. Oh, it's silver. Who's the girl next to you? I don't know. But she's pretty cute. Do you want me to go talk to her? Don't do that. It's the silver's girl. Yeah, don't do it unless you want to die. As soon as we entered the adventurer's guild, the attention of everyone inside was focused on us. That's a terrible thing to say. I've never killed anyone directly. The woman of silver, apparently, CMM. You've got a funny way of making me laugh. I pulled May, who was grimacing and uncomfortable, along with me to the reception desk. It's a little crowded, but it's not difficult to get through because everyone naturally run away from me. Oh, it's you, silver. Are you following the usual pattern today? Yes. Rico met me something, please. Sally, the receptionist, who was one of the few people who knew the identity of the Silver Comet, took out a file and flipped through it d. She's half my exclusive, and her position and salary rise in proportion to my contribution to the guild, and she's a rising star in the Heidberg branch of the Adventurer's Guild. I recommend this request. A rank a monster, a wyvern, has suddenly appeared and begun to live in a village near the Demon Forest. You have to defeat it. I've never seen a wyvern before. How big are they? 
I'd say it's about three meters high from the ground. If it spreads its wings, it could be four or five meters tall. It's a lower level dragon, so it's relatively smaller for a dragon species. But it's still much bigger than a human. It's an A-ranked monster. It's an A-ranked demon. Strong monsters are usually big. What parts of the wyvern can be used as materials? May, who was only interested in materials, asked Sally from the side. Scales can be used to make excellent armor, blood can be used for alchemy, claws and fangs can be used for weapons, bones can be used for forging, meat can be used for fine food, organs can be used for medicines. Even the wing membrane can be used to make leather goods. That's why wyverns can be sold for much more than find a party to kill them. Wyverns are worth a lot of money. Everything is made from materials. That's great. You're going to be used everything from head to toe. I'm starting to feel sorry for the wyverns. The guild would appreciate it if you hunted them as much as possible, since they are such one that attack people and livestock. There are reports that their numbers are increasing due to the fact that they are attacking people's livestock, so we don't have to be careful about overhunting them. So let's just exterminate the wyverns that have feared up residents around the village. Let's do that. In Japan, there was a problem with too many deer raiding the forests. A certain amount of thinning will be necessary. I'll take care of the request then. Please? Okay, here are the details. Thank you. She handed me a map with a lot of information with it. It includes the location of settlements, the expected population of wyverns, and the distribution of other demons. That's very helpful. It's an A-rank request. I'm sure it's a lot more detailed than that, since there have been a number of D-rank and C-rank research requests before this one. I see. You certainly can't just send out A-rank requests. That's what I mean. The only people who can receive A-rank requests are A-rank and above. You can only receive requests up to minus one rank, so even if you have a B-plus rank, which is considered elite in the world, you can't get one. And with A-rank, the labor cost is ridiculously high. If they were to just give out A-rank requests, they would be wasting human resources, and the Adventurer's Guild would be in the trouble just to pay the fees. Therefore, when a request comes in and is expected to be difficult, the guild asks a D-ranked adventurer or a mid-level C-ranked adventurer to do some research before assigning the request to the appropriate rank. The deadline for completing the task is about a month, so I think you can take your time. Have a good day then. I'm off. I'm off. Sally sees me off in May and I leave the adventurer's guild. And when we leave, I stop and have a discussion with May. Well, May. The request deadline is one month. I took it on the spur of the moment, but isn't it a bit long? Well, I guess it's enough time. It sounds like a fun request to me, and I'm totally fine with it since I'm free. What about you, May? Won't Master get mad at you for being away for a month? Well, the R&D team is growing now, so I'm sure they'll be able to run without me, but we have to ask them. That's right. Besides. I almost forgot, we're only 12 years old. If you think about it, a 12-year-old girl going on a trip alone with a guy of her own age is not allowed in an anime. I don't want to invoke my nobleman's authority either, since I'm indebted to Master. I'm sorry May, but that's all I can do. 8 spoke asterisk. I don't mind. Eberhard said he'll go with you. And this is what I got when I asked the Master. It was quite easy to get permission. But, Master, are you sure? I'm a man. It's more convenient for me. What? Well, there are many things in the adult world, you know. The Master said something I didn't understand, but it was good that he had given me permission. So, let's go. We have an item box, so we don't have to worry about food, clothing, or place to stay. Item box. This is also a new magical tool that was developed during the past six years. It is a large capacity item box created with the best of Lily's time space magic and May's magic tool production techniques. The time inside the box is stopped, it can be slowed down or accelerated, the contents never get mixed up, and the capacity is the size of a prefectural gymnasium. Although it can't hold living things, it's a super advanced artifact that boasts the ghostly performance of a blue raccoon robot's interdimensional pocket. 
Of course, such a thing does not exist in this world. On the contrary, we were slowly going beyond the common sense of the world. Oh, wait! May stopped me there. What? Why don't we call Lily? I'd love to, but I'm not sure if she will approve it. I'm sure it will be fine. I don't think so. Well, let's ask her. Lily, hello? I'll ask her on the communication pendant. Coming. See, I told you. It's true. Thus, Lily joined us on our adventure. Chapter 57 Lily, who had hurriedly come to me with transfer magic after preparing herself after the communication, spoke to me in a slightly angry tone. You just can't not invite me to such a fun thing. I don't know what on your mind, you know? Of course it will be fine if that how. Is that so? I don't understand why any parent would leave their beloved daughter in the hands of a child like me. Well, now that we can go together like this. Oh, no! A thieving cat took mercy on me. Ha ha ha. Oh, do you think it's mean showing mercy? It's a woman's war. I was watching from the side thinking, what's wrong with you? But if you're a bride-to-be, you should be more cautious. You're supposed to call your fiancé first in such cases. Well, yeah, I guess, it's right thing. Of course. My bride Lily got angry with me. Well, her base personality is Japanese. It's hard to connect daily activities with aristocratic ideas like my bride's, let alone scientific knowledge. Also, her father said that no matter if she is bride s, she is still an unmarried woman, so he can't allow her to stay overnight. What are you going to do then? It's a good thing I'm came, but I can't go on an adventurous journey if I can't stay the night. So I'm leaving at night. I'll transfer back to you in the morning with transfer magic, so don't leave me behind. I see, I understand. Is that okay with you, May? Well, she's the one who started it. The girls, who had just were in a fire fight between were relatively friendly as long as I didn't get involved, probably because she had saved her lives. For Lily, a friend who is not bound by status differences is probably valuable. So, let's get going. Yeah. Now that we've talked it out, we're off. The sun had already risen. Eight spoke asterisk. No, but it's a long way. Well, it's 350 kilometers away. Boring. I wonder if there's anything I can do to pass the time. After walking for about half an hour out of town, we were getting pretty bored. We walked and walked, but the scenery didn't change. All we could see were meadows, wheat fields, a few forests. There were the occasional monsters, but they were regularly exterminated, and none of them seemed to come to the area around the road. In other words, it was boring as hell. It was about 350 kilometers northeast to the village near the demon forest where we were heading tea in a straight line, it would be about the distance from Tokyo to Lake Biwa. If to use a more realistic analogy in terms of direction, it would be somewhere between Tokyo and northern Miyagi Prefecture. In any case, in this world without vehicles, a distance of 350 kilometers is big distance. Even in modern Japan, where trains are available, it is not in short distance to travel unless you use the bullet train. It's too far to walk, and Lily's transfer magic can only take her to places she's been before. We are not leave the Fahrenheit territory which shows you just how big our frontier territory is. May, there's no one around, so let's get that thing out. Is that it? Yes, that one. When I asked her to do so, she looked back at me and confirmed it. What's that? Don't be so shy, show me. It was cute to see Lily looking like she wanted to be shown how to do it, but I felt sorry for her if she didn't, so I encouraged May to let her out. This is the trail wagon that runs through the wilderness of the Great Plains. What's this? As May mouths the sound of a small drum that was also present in this world, she pulls out a transport from item box that looks like the sum of a standard carriage and a Volkswagen Type 2. I knew what the trail wagon buffalo was, as I had been involved in its development, or rather, had interjected from the side, but Lily, who had never seen one before, probably couldn't understand what it was just by looking at it. In fact, it is a mobile artifact that does not yet exist in this world, so it is not surprising. Lily, this is a self-propelled carriage. 
self-propelled carriage. Yes. It's a carriage that moves without horses. A carriage that moves without horses? That's a car, in other words. That's what it is. With May's super technology, I have created the concept of automobiles in this other world. Come on, let's take a ride. I'll take one. I'm in. Lily was next, and then May got in. It's pretty big inside. That's what we had to work so hard for. May is banging on the walls like a Japanese car development team. But does it really work? It's pretty fast, it'll go 50 kilometers. Yes, it does. It can go up to about 70 kilometers per hour. 70 kilometers. 70 kilometers is about the speed of a horse running at full speed. The fact that this metal monster can go as fast as a horse is probably unbelievable. After you will see it is let's try to drive it. As soon as she said that, May got into the driver's seat and started the magic engine. It seems that my shock is also involved in this engine, but I don't know the details either. The only thing I know is that May is amazing. The vehicle began to vibrate slightly, making a nice little sound. The vibration is quite pleasant, about the same as that of a modern Japanese bus. Then let's get underway. Oh, it's moving. Slowly, the buffalo moved along the unpaved street with exposed soil. The suspension is so effective that I don't get carsick even on bumpy roads. Oh my! It's so comfortable! I exclaimed as I stuck my head out the window and let the wind hit my face. The inside of the buffalo is like a large living room, so it's easy to move around inside. May, you're amazing! Oh my, I've been complimented! And, you can drink the drinks in the storage room there. May showed us the storage room, which looked like a refrigerator. Set up in the car. The time inside is stopped by the application of Lily's space-time magic, so the items inside will not deteriorate unless the door is opened. Lily's space-time magic is pretty awesome too. I said to Lily, who smiled and handed me a glass of chilled rango juice. Oh, thank you. Mmm. Yeehaw. Lily smiled beside me. May was driving at high speed. Everyone seems to be having fun, and I'm starting to enjoy it too. Chapter 58 Hey! What's wrong? While traveling in the buffalo, I suddenly raised my voice and May asked me. Oh, no, I saw monster magic reaction in about 500 meters away. 500 meters? That's a long way. I'm sure they'll be gone by the time we will arrive oh. Lily replied, but it didn't seem it will be like this. No, they seem to have stayed on the road all along. Are they sleeping? I think it's an ambush. I guess so. That means it's an intelligent monster, right? There are oh low of types of demons, from slime, which may or may not even have instincts, to goblins, which have a certain amount of mind. It's hard to think of a low-grade, monster like a slime that will stay in one place without thinking. It would be better to assume that they are smart enough to learn that people often pass by when they are on the street. I want to kill them. Lily? Lily raised her hand, looking very curious. I can understand why she would want to have her first battle with the monsters, but isn't it dangerous? I've got this. I see. With that, Lily created a 30 centimeter long ice spear and made it float in the air. Come to think of it, Lily had learned ice magic before space-time magic, right? I've never seen Lily's magic before. I'm curious to see what kind of magic is it and if it gets dangerous I'll help her from the side, so it's safe to try. Yes. That's exciting. But don't come T.I. them near as close as 30 meters it's dangerous. If she has both long and short-range attacks like I do, it's not a problem, but if she can only attack from a distance, she shouldn't get as close as possible until she will be sure attack reached the target. Aye that's fine. My arms are itching. Well, just take it easy. Even if the reaction is strong, it is at best a C-rank. It's not even close to a rank, which is considered as advanced monster, and probably not even B-rank, which is semi-advanced. There's nothing to worry about as long as I'm standing by her side. It's about time. The distance between us and the monster is now less than 100 meters. It's not surprising that they shone sooner or later. No? 
It's mimicking us. There are some animals in the world that mimic each other very cleverly. And it's not just a privilege of animals. It's not just animals that mimic each other, it's also monsters that are based on animals. Lily, do you know where it is? But for me, with my sonar, the position is obvious. Hmm, maybe. There? Lily pointed to an unnatural rise in the ground. It's hard to tell from a distance, but the mimicry is so poor that if you look at it from close up with prior information that it's suspicious, you can definitely spot it. Correct. Then I'll deal with that right away. Pause do. It would be tough for Lily, who had never experienced a real battle, to suddenly take a shot between the lines. So May breaks gently and stops a few dozen meters in front of her. Take aim and... Let's go! Ice Spear Lily creates several ice spears that are larger than the ones she just created, and seem to be 40 to 50 centimeters long, and launches them at a very fast speed. Boom! The ice spear that flew with an eerie sound pierced the mimicking monster with a pleasantly ugly thrust. Gagyoa! The monster, which was suddenly hit by a shot, jumped up and screamed. But perhaps it was hit in the wrong place, and its cries gradually diminished until it finally bled out and stopped moving. That's great, Lily. That was a nice blow. I did it. You're pretty good at that. There was already no response on my sonar. It was a sign that the enemy had been completely defeated. What kind of demon was it after all? I approached the dead monster and didn't wishing to touch it directly, so I cast a general's armor to create a magical arm and grab it. The monster that was mimicking. Lizard? Hmm, this is a lizard. Looking at a large earth-colored lizard that seems to be close to one meter, May, who was also approaching to the side, said with his arms crossed. Lizard? What is it? It's a Syrinx subordinate monster that mimics soil. It eats soil like an earthworm and takes nutrition from insects and other small creatures in the soil. But in rare cases, it can attack large animals, so the Adventurer's Guild has designated it as a target to be defeated. You know a lot about it. One of our worker is a reptile enthusiast. We have a reptile enthusiast in our workshop, and if you ask me, they're quite charming looking. Well, they're dead, though. And they even eat large animals, right? I guess ordinary people can't handle them. I guess they're like iguanas. I wonder if it's like iguanas. On Earth, there were often news stories about reptile lovers who were bitten by their pets and seriously injured on compilation sites. It's often a problem when the pet owner is eaten. He. Please other about that. It's not strange that a earth lizard that has eaten its owner to death and learned to taste humans runs away and ambushes people on the street like this. I'm fine with that. We knew the reality and lamented the fact that we couldn't keep them. As we were talking about this, Lily, who was poking at the corpse of a tweaked earth lizard with an ice spear, asked me question. Hey, can we sell this? Can we eat the meat or something? Oh, no. It smells like dirt. Teeth, claws and scales are used to make armor, I believe. The meat, as you can imagine, smells like dirt and is inedible, so let's throw it away. Shall we dismantle it? Yeah. Here are your gloves. Thanks. Can I borrow your knife? Lily was the one who killed it, so she was the one to dismantle it. It was the first time for Lily to dismantle a prey, so it took some time, but it was not bad. Ah, it's done. The dismantling was done in about twenty minutes, a bit faster than I thought. It took about twenty minutes. Oh, sure. It would have been easier to entrust it to the guild. We have an inventory with a time stop function. Will the guild dismantle it for me? For a fee, yes. I wish you would have told me that first. Lily, whose hands were sticky with blood and dirt even though she was wearing gloves, lamented with a fed-up expression. It's a good thing that you learning. You got the hang of dismantling it to some extent. Yes. There is a difference between not being able to do something and being able to do something but not doing it. At least with this practice, she is not inexperienced anymore. A normal duchess would not be able to experience this, so in that sense it is a valuable experience. Well, then, let's get going. Even though we have plenty of time, we don't want to be stuck here. Yes. Let's go. 
Our journey continues. Chapter 59 We had been riding in the buffalo for a few hours, and passed about two-thirds of the way to our destination, and the sun had set. We stopped the buffalo at a flat spot beside the road and took a break. After that, not only earth lizards, but also goblins, slimes, green boas, and orcs appeared and were defeated by Lily to add to our inventory. Thanks to this, there was no shortage of ingredients for dinner. I've never killed so many living creatures in my life. Well, they're monsters, aren't they? If you kill a pet animal, or even a monster that attacks people, the psychological impact will not be that great. I don't like the thought of a duchess who can kill monsters with no hesitation. What? You said it, vixen. You're a petulant fox. Ah. I don't care what people think. I'm not going to let you get away with this. I'm going to report this and put pressure on the workshop. Don't, it's interference in internal affairs. I can only see a future of conflicts, like an external lord putting pressure on the workshop of another territory. It's not wartime, so I'd like Lily to think a little more about that. Also, Lily is not very flat. It's a cute size, but I like it. Lily, I like you that way you are. I'm not really arguing with her, but I feel sorry for her if she remains in a bad mood, so I follow your suit. Really? You're not lying. What am I supposed to do, lie to Lily? Mm -hmm. Okay, I forgive you. I don't know where the Tsundra went, but Lily is so happy to be with me that she's completely delirious. Thanks to her, I succeeded in appeasing her without difficulty. Cute. I can explain it. I'm going to punish you. I walked behind the pouting May and grabbed her by her two assertive, lush mountain ranges. It was a super wonderful happy excellent utopia, to say the least, with a combination of sinking softness and bouncing youthful elasticity. It was a super wonderful happy excellent utopia, to say the least. He ah. She jumped up in a panic, her face unusually red. She jumped away from me, hugging her chest with both arms, shivering and opening and closing her mouth repeatedly. Are you really twelve years old? This is a weapon now. Ha, ha. What? How idiot. This is the first time in the nearly six years since it may has spoken out bad of me, I thought as she abused me for no good reason. Eight spoke asterisk. Fix my mood, will you? Mph. While Lily was preparing dinner, I kept talking to May Sulky back. She usually talks to me on her own, but this time she didn't respond at all. I was troubled. You didn't like me rubbing your chest? No, I think she usually doesn't like it, but that's just the way she is. I don't know. Oh, maybe it's because I told Lily that I only like her? SHH. I don't know. That's right. She is cute. I said that because I felt bad for her. I really like you too. Her ears twitched. May's ears, which are slightly more pointed than those of humans, reacted. Lily is a precious girlfriend that May can say whatever she wants. But if you're too mean to her, she might not like you. I don't like that. You have to be nice to her. Besides, I'm not going to leave you just because I have fiancé. I guess May is messing around with Lily because she's worried that she might take me I. If that's the case, I have to relieve her of it. Besides, she's so close to the legitimate son of a great aristocrat. If she doesn't become my wife in the future, the situation around her will not allow it. That's why May's fears are confirmed to be unfounded. Fortunately, both May and I have positive feelings for each other, so we are unlikely to encounter any problems that tend to occur between men and women with different statuses. Al. May? I love. Mugga. So don't hug me so suddenly. I can't breathe. Eight spoke asterisk. So, are we done talking? It seems like you guys have been making fun of each other a lot. The food Lily made looks delicious. Don't play dumb. I was watching you. I'll make it up to you later. Well, I'm your fiancé, aren't I? I'll forgive you for being so open-minded. Lily is so cute when she can't be honest. I kissed her lightly on the cheek so that May wouldn't see it. Ah. It's so hot. I'm sorry for scaring you. Don't shake the ladle, it's hot. 
Lily cries out, holding her cheeks and turning red. It's not that she's uncomfortable, she's simply happy and embarrassed because she was kissed. But Lily was cooking. Thanks to her, I got a few drops of boiling water on me, but this was also my fault, so to speak. I'll take it in stride. By the way, I've become quite a sketchy guy. I couldn't have imagined such a development in my previous life. I'm glad I was reincarnated. 8 spoke asterisk. The buffalo is an excellent machine that can also be used as a bed if the chair is folded down. Ha! Huh. Wow, it's so fluffy. Lily and May are back to normal, but it's almost T.I. to sleep. Lily had better go home early or her father would be worried about her. I love it. I want to take stay over tomorrow. Perhaps because she knows this, she lounges in bed, looking as if she wants to leave it behind. It will be fun to lie down together. It's kind of like a sleeper express. It's not the same as a night train, though, because it's only during the day that you can lie down and move. I'll wake up early tomorrow and come here. Good night, Hal, May. Good night, Lily. Good night, Lily. Then Lily went back to the Duke's house with transfer magic. I just noticed, Lily just call May by name? Until now, she only called her a female fox, a thief cat, you, a dwarf girl, and so on. This means that the two of them have become even closer. Female friendship. I like that kind of thing. I don't have any male friends, so I admire that. Now, let's go to bed. Wait, May. You're not going to sleep without taking a bath, are you? What? No matter what, the buffalo doesn't have a bath. May looked back at me with a look that said, Why did you suddenly do something so outrageous? But as an ex-Japanese, I can't believe she would sleep without taking a bath. If I don't have one, I'll make one. May, can you use water magic? No, I can't. I can only use earth magic. Let's boil some drinking water from the inventory. Yes. But if we use earth magic to make the bath water, what about the fuel? I'll make the wood. With my physical abilities pushed to the limit, I was able to cut down a tree and turn it into firewood in an instant. That's only took 30 seconds. Then, I put the chopped wood into my inventory. And with 0% humidity, the elapsed time accelerates. Raw wood is explosive and difficult to burn but if to use the inventory to roll and dry it, it's ready to use. It's just firewood. Ha ha ha. What a great passion. The bath is the only thing I can't give up. The Japanese part of my heart is screaming at me. I'm not going to compromise on the bath. After that, when I tried to go in slowly by myself, May also broke in and we had to go in together. She was so shy about having her breasts squeezed, but she didn't mind being seen naked. I don't understand her. Also, May's breasts were amazing. It was especially bad when I saw it. Let's just say it was hard to handle without being caught after May had fallen asleep. Chapter 60 It was morning. But I was sleepy. Because I had stay up all night with her, with her ample chest rising and falling in time with her breathing, with her sleep talking, though I couldn't understand what she was saying, and with her occasionally rolling over and hugging me, it was impossible for me to sleep properly. I finally fell asleep at dawn, just as the sky was getting whiter. But as soon as the sun rise up, Lily came and woke me up. By the way, Lily had said yesterday that she was going to wake up early and come over here. I know she is looking forward to it, but I'm going crazy with lark of sleep by the way, speaking of lark of sleep, I had a lot of trouble last night. There are no tissues in this world. What am I supposed to do? I don't want to wipe with a towel, and if I flush it with water, it will harden. I had no choice but to stand there for a while and wash it off little by little with water. It seemed to be the same in this world, that it could be easily washed away after some time. What are you doing? Wake up. Let's eat breakfast. Lily woke me up by banging her ladle on the frying pot to be honest, I'm dying for her to stop because she's annoying May and it's bothering my sleep-deprived head. N -n 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 -g, 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 g g Don't sound like a zombie. Ice water shower. It's cold. You awake? The cold water dropped on my face and I finally wakes up a little. Yes, breakfast is ready. Hm, good morning, Lily. 
Good morning. And then Mayor Arendel, the source of my sleepiness, wakes up. Good morning. The bed was softer than I expected and I slept well. That's because you were sleeping peacefully without a care in the world. I shouted inwardly, sipping on the cold water Lily served me without showing it. I can't have a good night's sleep unless I get a partition or something. I feel like I'm going to die of exhaustion before we reach destination. For breakfast today, I made a sandwich with sautéed orc meat and a Caesar salad on a bun. There's also consommé soup with oak bone broth. That's quite a feast for a morning. You look like an aristocrat. What are you talking about, the legitimate son of a great nobleman? That's what I said. I think I may have been sleepwalking and I remembered past life. Itadakamasu. We said Itadakamasu in the style of the imperial kingdom and enjoyed our meal. She was a duchess who was never supposed to cook for herself, but surprisingly, Lily was a very good cook. Why is Lily such a good cook? As with the with last night's dinner, the quality of the food was as good as that of a top chef. And she does it with ingredients that she has on hand. I wonder if Lily is blessed by the god of cooking. I like to cook. It's kind of fun, and I've gotten good at it by cooking every day at home. She could open a fancy restaurant in a prime location in the imperial capital right now. As a former Japanese gourmet, I can vouch for the taste. I'm so lucky to be able to eat such delicious food. Stop it, you're embarrassing me. She said that, but she seemed happy about it. And so we spent a leisurely and peaceful morning, despite the fact that we were on a road where demons were present. Eight spoke asterisk. After finishing our breakfast and cleaning up, we got ready to leave. When we were ready, we checked our route for the day. If all goes well, we should reach our destination in about two hours, around noon today. We passed a lot yesterday, so we should have plenty of time today. I'll stay on the lookout with the sonar, Lily will fight Monster off, and May will drive. Yes. Leave it to me I will deal with monsters. I also knew that my sleepiness was at its limit. I'm sorry, I couldn't sleep last night. I'll have the sonar respond automatically, so let me sleep until for a while. I create the magic circle for the sonar on a piece of paper and stuck it to the ceiling of the buffalo. I'll play with the shape of the magic circle and the arrangement of the runes, and modify the magic formula so that it will make a sound in response to living things even when I'm asleep. I'll have to remember to set an alarm to go off in my sleeping brain if a monster of B-rank or higher appears that Lily can't handle by herself. I don't think anything will happen, but... Good night, I'll take care of the rest. I wonder why you're so sleepy. Well? Maybe May was talking too loud in her sleep. As I listened to the two of them talking about it AMD they were not far off from the truth, I fall asleep. Eight spoke asterisk. Are you awake? May. What is it? When I woke up, May, who had been resting with a glass of drink, looked at me and said, We're in an hour away from our destination. We're taking a break now. Hal, are you awake? Lily came over and called out to me. Yes, I feel much better. Maybe it was the hour of sleep, but I feel fine now. Did you see any dangerous monsters? No. They were all that type I could defeat. Maybe it's because the buffalo is big and fast. A monster with some intelligence and the ability to judge the situation would have been scare and run away. I see. If they see a buffalo and still come at you, they're either stupid enough to not sense the danger of the unknown, or they're chicken shit monster who are too scared to move. Even on Earth, a deer would scare of the light of a car's headlights. The same thing seems to happen to weak monsters. Here's your soup. It's delicious. Thank you. As I drank the leftover consomme soup with oak bone broth from the morning, I stretched, cracking my spine. We better get going. Okay. Okay. May launched the magic engine and Buffalo began to run. We almost arrived. Eight spoke asterisk. No, but we re here pretty fast. It's a victory for the technology of our Arendelle workshop. Normally it would take a week, but we arrived in just two days. It was a long journey of 350 kilometers, but by this world's standards, it had taken us only two days to reach our destination. This was the first time for the buffalo to travel such a long distance. 
By the way, it seems that the buffalo can already be produced by the craftsmen in the workshop without Maya's help. So, if she wanted to sell it on a large scale, she could do so. However, if this kind of product were to go out into the world, it would ruin the business of the carriage, and the end result would be that some unknown workshop or other country would disassemble it and steal the technology. So, the current policy is to sell only to trusted and influential people in the territory, noblemen who are close to us, and the royal family and those authorized by the royal family. However, if we didn't have the technology for a magic engine or a magic battery, we wouldn't be able to imitate it. It's not the kind of thing that can be reproduced by a craftsman with natural talent who has to go through several years of special training. I see, that's why it's a black box. In the event that you're not sure what to do, you'll be able to find out by yourself. I'm sure you'll be pleased to know that I'm not the only one. Even though I've been watching her closely and know her better than anyone else, I still shudder at her talent when I look back. Maybe May will even develop a space rocket someday. At the very least, she has advanced the scientific civilization of this world by at least a hundred years. It's not impossible, is it? Yes, it is. In the event that you have any questions regarding where and how to use the site, please feel free to contact us. By the way, May made something when she was six years old that a blacksmith with natural talent would have to train for several years to make. When I think about it, I realize once again how amazing the woman known as Mayor Arendelle is. Even though I've been watching her closely and know her better than anyone else, I still shudder at her talent when I glance back at her. However, it would not be impossible for a blacksmith with a certain amount of knowledge and experience to understand these mechanisms and imitate them to create similar products. If this were to happen, it would be a huge loss for the Arendelle workshop, which has invested a huge amount of money in research and development and equipment. In the current situation where laws such as patents and copyrights have not yet caught up, they had no choice but to prevent the outflow of technology on their own. Hey! What's that? Lily? As we were talking, Lily, who had gotten out of the buffalo earlier and was looking out at the scenery of the farming village, poked her head into the car, looking uncomfortable. There's a big, black thing flying towards us. Could that be a wyvern? I got out of the car and used my sonar at the monster bird in the distance, and its silhouette became clear. Long neck, broad wings, thick tail, sharp claws, and hard scales covering its surface. It was definitely a wyvern.